Oh crap, I was plugged in for that, sorry. Yeah, I guess everybody added their, their, uh... None of my subs have animated emotes. I gotta make them still. I'll get to it. You'll have some animated bother emotes soon, Dewey. For all your patronage. <laughs> all your support to my channel. I can't even give you animated emotes. Oh my god. Muted song. Boop. I know, I know. The bother leave, I could probably transfer over right now, uh, but I'm too lazy and I haven't even looked at those settings yet. I need to do like a global emote clean out and upload thing. God, I did not get any sleep last night. This morning was all work people, like uh, people working on like the neighboring homes too. This whole neighborhood was built in the 90s, so like everything is falling apart now. So like everybody has like work trucks all over them and there's always construction. It's horrible. Can't even see animated emotes on mobile? Did they not, does it use up a lot of battery or something or did they just not implement it? <clears throat> because that first frame of the animated remote needs to look good. I have taco or rice stuck in my, um, did a uh, like a salsa, green salsa chicken thing in the crock pot last night. And I had it this morning, this afternoon, with uh, basically rice, chicken, green chicken thing, cilantro, taco cheese, queso fresco, and that was it. That was lunch. <laughs> oh, Bolvar's dad is here. Ooh, how's it going? <laughs> How you doing? Oh, I, know, I like this song. Boom, boom, boom. My phone app at least doesn't have pet the bee from fat. Huh. It's a still frame. Yeah, that's voice box. Voice box is cool. He does a he does a really chill like Ew Bolvar as well, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Um Voice Box does a very chill stream. I uh, like those the people who stream on like Saturday morning are so vital. <laughs> They're so vital. Ah, I gotta get these things off of the 3D printer. I didn't I didn't take off the new plate mounts. Ugh, and they're stuck. The Elmer's glue is dried. We need to design more parts, by the way, because nothing is good enough for me. It's never good enough for me. It is humid. Holy shit. I got the window cracked and the AC isn't on as much as it has been in the past because fuck it, man. I'm... Uh, I'm not spending hundreds of dollars just to feel cold. Uh, <laughs> so the AC is not. I did voices emotes. Oh, okay. It's distant cacophony and with a bretimus. <laughs> I know all those guys and they don't know who I am. Actually, voice box is the only one to acknowledge me. You're like the tech streamer or something, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> they don't know who I am. I'm just a polyp. I'm just a polyp on the, uh, on the, the underbelly of all those streams. <laughs> oh, those are some cute animated. Who's that? Gamey me garage. Who, who? I don't know. Those are cute though. Those are very cute. I like the derp spin. I actually like that one a lot. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. My hair's all screwed up today. That's the thing. That's the thing about having webcams is I gotta I gotta present my best and my hair didn't dry right today because of the humidity. Look at this. Look at this here. This is... Oh yeah. Yeah, looking good, right? It's like it's like fuzzy. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> How I can't go on like this. Alright, anyway. Uh back over to here. I like lurking in your streams are nice to listen to. I appreciate that. No, lurkers are Lurkers are the lifeblood of of a Twitch channel, man. They uh, there's like there's like five active people, and then everybody else lurking is basically the foundation of it all. But yeah, it's good to hear, man. Thanks, appreciate that. Yeah, I've been working on this PC. I didn't stream yesterday because there were people in and out of the house all day. I just had things inspected, which is annoying. Uh, I didn't schedule any of this stuff, but. Uh, I figured it would be it would be kinder to not have some random dude either outside or you know looking at the HVAC stuff uh, on camera. But I did still work. I did still work on stuff. Which it 
it looks like just a big mess, and it kind of is, but I've been trying to kind of like unify the look of this thing and uh, make sure that everything's gonna look cool when it gets in there. Cause I mean, otherwise why, why put the effort in if it's not gonna look cool? The parts that we printed look really good. The parts that we designed last time. So we might do a little bit more parts designing today. Like this box right here. Well, it's just like here, let me just get the music out of here. Cause I got a lot of work to do and I guess we'll get to it, right? I'll just kind of force myself to do the work. I'm gonna try to be part of the longest flight planes for the one gram planes. No, that's interesting though. I built an ultralight like, uh, what is it? Those like paper wing airplanes that have kind of like the, the like trapezoid shape that you build at a balsa. I made those <laughs> while you were working. Did you talk to yourself like you were streaming? I had the, the dialogue in my head. Yeah, I work a lot faster without you guys. Let me tell you that much. But I, I do have that mentality where I'm talking about what I'm doing in my head. Because that's streaming, right? Streaming, you're just taking your inner voice and making it your outer voice. Why is there a syringe right here? I've been living at this desk too much. I need to get my computer, my, my game computer back so I can live at the other desk. <laughs> my butt can only take so much time on this stool. There's a balsa plane. Uh, there was an old Macintosh game. It wasn't shovelware. It was actually a pretty fun little game. Um, actually, I think I saw Tomato play a game like that back in the day. Or was it? No, Rabaz played that a lot. Rabaz played a, um, a paper airplane game. Oh, I see. There's a balsa wood game coming from the KSP devs. Hmm. This is why you need three computers. Yeah, one's just the emergency computer. I could always throw a monitor on a Raspberry Pi. Is this another muted section? No, there we go, it's back. Um, yeah, there was an old paper airplane game for like the Macintosh, the Mac like 2GS or whatever we had uh, that I used to play a lot of. I, I like that game. It was basically forwards and backwards, but you'd stop the airplane over like vents and stuff. But then there was like, there was like a version like a couple of years ago that I remember Raba was playing. Mm. All right, let me get Metronomic out of here. You guys should check out Metronomic if he dares to stream again. I think he will. It's just the his most recent was 22 days ago. I worry. I think he's fine. He's probably actually getting more gigs now that people are settling down with COVID or something. All right, let's uh, let's turn this down. Let me just I'll hit pause in case I have to go to the bathroom later. But um, yeah, I've been I've been working. I've been working on this computer here because basically I have no choice. <laughs> Basically, I have no choice. I have to work on this computer because it is my computer. I want to get it done. You know, I want to actually have a friggin' computer. So the style that we made up, the same, similar to same style that I did the um, thermal camera housing in. Oh, which is not plugged in. I'm going to plug this in. The shutter was driving me crazy. It's it, The shutter works on this, right? It works great. But um, it was clicking. It clicks at like periodic intervals. So I, uh, I unplugged it. I, I figure not having that shutter going when it's not active is probably good. I, I should have put a switch on it. I, I should have put a switch somewhere on this so I could just turn it off and back on, but then you need to reactivate it in OVS and everything. So um, yeah, it's not gonna activate there. That'll activate here. Cool. Yeah, see, everything still works. This is it at its coolest, actually. This has been unplugged for a little while. So actually, you know what? We don't need the tiny fan. It is still the cutest fan ever though. Look at this little guy. Look at this little guy. I'm gonna put this on the video card. That'll definitely cool it off. <laughs> Where anything over absolutely no air exchange at all is necessary, this, this is your go-to. But at full voltage, this thing vibrates and Suanon was very, very explicit in telling you not to run a PWM to this thing and not to alter the speed. You can't do any, they, they want you to request a fan that, that blows less. And they're like, we can't do it because it's, we can't make a fan that, that blows or sucks. I don't know, both of those are synonymous with bad. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I figure running this at like three volts would keep it from vibrating and I could put it in the thermal housing. But I mean, right now, of course it calibrates right when I call attention to it. Right now, it's all right. It's aight. So anyway, I'm gonna put this thing aside. 
Stop talking about random shit when you're supposed to be telling people what you're working on right now. Well, this semi-explosion that you're looking at right now of all of, of all of the expensive computer stuff that I own, except for the one extra computer, entire computer that I have that needs to be water-cooled, um, this giant explosion that you see right in front of you is the result of me working on this for a little while. Now, I am starting to put together a coherent look in this case. I think it's gonna be pretty snazzy. Um, there are a lot of things that I need to figure out, and we're gonna figure out a big piece of those today. One of the things is, of course, I need to drill all of the holes for all the stuff in this plate, in this plate of carbon fiber that I'm using as my base platen. Now, I could have, could of, could have, I could have used the grating at the bottom of the case, and then it would be just like that open air case again. But I think what I wanna do is I wanna dry, use this plate as the bottom plate, of course, as we were talking about before, but I would like to drop the wiring down into here. It's gonna be the wiring, and it's also going to be the SSD that my OS is on. I was thinking about whether or not I wanted to get like an M.2 converter and mount that down here and then transfer the 500 gigabyte hard drive. This is like four years old. This is a four year old drive, which scares me. Although then again, due to the way that I, I store files now, I keep files on the file server. As long as that thing stays healthy, I'll swap a hard drive in there every now and then. But uh, this, if this crashes, it's not that big of a deal for me to fully reinstall everything on the computer. It's a nice way to live. You, everybody should look at a building a file server out of their old computer parts. But any, anywho, anywho, how's it going? Nothing's working. Um, this hard drive down here, this hard drive fills me with dread. I think it's gonna fail soon, not sure. The one terabyte equivalent of this thing, we were gonna play at one of the LAN parties. We were gonna play, uh, what was that game called again? Damn it. Uh, oh, GTFO. We were gonna play GTFO, and I kept going to install it, and nothing was happening. Like it wouldn't download. Turns out the one terabyte drive was no longer accepting data. It had failed in the most convenient possible way, and it was like a, a couple weeks where it would just, it just wouldn't take data. It just didn't want any data, any new data in it. And when I finally discovered it, I was like, oh fuck. And I went out and I bought a, uh, one of the little M2 drives that now lives under this motherboard, transferred everything over and I've been good from there. But I bought that drive and this drive at the same time. I'm worried about this drive, worried. Yeah, it became a boomer. It no longer accepted new instructions. Um, but yeah, anyway, worried about this drive, but I'm gonna put it under everything because it's a little inconvenient, it's a little large. It'd be kind of cute if I could get an adapter, but the adapter is like a whole big circuit board. You know, and move over to M2 so that I can transfer things. Well, I shouldn't, no, that's not how that works. I'll need a new system drive when I go over to the, the Ryzen system. Big drive problems, this is only 500 gigs. It's not a big drive. But yeah, so that's got to mount to the underside here. And then on the upper side, I have to figure out where all the cables are going and all the stuff is going. Before that, though, I need a way to mount the grating to the sides. Now, this is just where I'm putting the parts. Let me get the parts out of the way. Well, I need to show off stuff on this one. I don't know where to put this stuff. I'm out of surfaces. Oh, yeah, phys physically big drive. All right, all right, all right. Man, it's, it's hard sometimes to get nuance when you're streaming, and it's especially hard to get just base meanings of things. <laughs> it's like, there wasn't any nuance there. Now, I love this look. I think this is a great look, but this material is like impossible to work with. This stuff will just kill you, and it doesn't even care. Also, this thing is strong. Like, you can punch this, and nothing will happen. It'll be fine. Like, the Maker Beam, and the, the speaker grill of this flavor are very strong. It's, far, it's not, no, it's not your fault. I am dumb, I am dumb. And there's a delay, so. <laughs> it's, getting basic meaning is, is it's, it's difficult. I can't do, I can't do the, uh, which guild is that? Is the Assassin's Guild? Eh, we know. Nah, it doesn't quite work. <laughs> the material's cold. Yeah, five and a quarter Bigfoot hard drives. I had a Bigfoot hard drive in my e-machine that I used to play 
I don't think it could. Yeah, it could handle Descent 2. Might have been 3. No, 3 was later. Three Descent 3 was when I had a Voodoo 3. And I think I still had the same Bigfoot hard drive back then, too. Man, I, I would love to know what happened to that hard drive. <laughs> it probably failed. Um, I think it failed and then I took it apart. Anyway, this is, this is the old look. Although, you know, that wouldn't look too bad with the silver sides. This still rattles. It still rattles because I literally just chucked the material into the Maker Beam extrusion. Which is cool. It makes a cool looking panel, right? But I want to I wanna reduce the amount of lip and I want to cover the edges of the grating and then I want it to be solid. I don't want it to rattle around. You can't really hear that. It rattles around a little bit. So, what I've done is spent an absolute fucking fortune on some hex grid grill. And I don't know, I don't know what's up with car grills, the car grill website, going absolutely psycho about hex, hex grids and stuff like that. Because Google, the Google AdSense and search results and stuff only come up with this company's stuff. They only come up with this company's stuff, whereas before I was able to find like screen material and mesh material at like overclockers websites and stuff. They had they had this stuff as like fancy overclockers grill, but then Car Grill's website got a hold of it. They sell it in two sizes, and one is the affordable size that's too narrow for the top of the case, and the other one is about an $80 order of grading material <sighs> that I had to do. So $80 have now been spent on this thing. The, by comparison, by the way, the carbon fiber sheet was $35. So I probably could have gotten two more carbon fiber sheets and then, like, done a weird thing with the plating on it for cheaper. But this stuff is kind of a bitch to work with, so I don't really want to do that. This stuff I can cut with flush cutters. And that's what I did for this panel. I've got a big sheet of the stuff, and it seems like, it seems like when you order stuff from, from, like, a company and it gets in the hands of UPS, UPS is like, I don't know, they've got some hang-ups with flat material. They're like jealous of it or something. And so they feel the need to, uh, like, it said do not fold. And it really did look like somebody just punched their knee into it and folded it a little bit. Like, I, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> no matter what, if you get something flat that's shipped, it's going to get really stressed out by the shipping process. Somebody is going to kick something. And uh, uh, fortunately, this stuff bends back into place. This is aluminum, by the way. It's much lighter than the other grilling material, and it looks cool. So, down this goes, and this has to somehow mount to the top rail of the case. And I want to keep it flat, because uh, it's, it's not a strong material, but it will provide a nice, a nice topper for everything. And then we also have to do the side sections, and then the side sections need the fans in them. The stuff we worked on, by the way, last stream. Ah! God, that was loud. I hope that wasn't very loud for you guys. Uh, <laughs> God, that scared the shit out of me. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so the stuff we worked on last time worked out really, really well. It looks good. Um, here, let me get the light on it. Let me get the light on it. It's got, it looks a little bit like, these look like those old, like, 1800s, like, radiator covers, but they're purple. But yeah, that's got a good look. And that'll be able to mount to the bottom of the case where it won't rattle around. My absolutely necessary capacitor block. I just made brackets for my case designing that do that thing, but I plan to bend the edges of the mesh. Yeah, I was thinking about whether or not I wanted to try to bend the edges of this mesh. Because this stuff bends really easily. It's just making a clean bend is not really going to be that easy to do. I don't think I'm going to have a good time with that. I don't know where to put this plate, but it'll be out of the way, and I'll know where it is. We'll put it right here. Okay. Oh, man. That was a, that was a salsa hiccup. Um, so, yeah, everything, everything getting mounted to the base platen. I am going to have to make a new wiring thing for this, and concerningly, there's a little bit of scorching in these. <laughs> I don't know what did that. I don't know when that happened, if it was like a lightning storm or something. Generally, uh, stuff doesn't go that wrong with my power supply. Uh, that fills me with, with dread. These should be large enough to carry the current, the wires, but it's at the connector where there's a reduced amount of material that can heat up. 
I'm concerned about that, but there's I'm not really going to be remaking this thing anytime soon. So I'll I'll have to refresh the connectors and use good ones and make sure there's a there's a good contact on there and maybe clean those off a little bit. Um, and then that gets mounted to the base platen, and then I need some kind of like I guess one hole to carry the wires from both of these down and down and away. But yeah, graphics card mounted that'll survive a car ride. I've got the back plate redux that that works. I have oh, I unplugged the thermal camera like some kind of a monster. Hold on. I just grabbed this the wrong way. Put that back. <laughs> oh my god. He's horrible. Um, okay, so... Then I also... Finished this back plate, and I've got a filter... Filtered power supply coming into this thing. So any high-frequency transients and stuff like that are going to get filtered out by that. That's actually suggested by the manufacturer that you have something like that going into this VI arm, the auto rectifying module, the auto ranging ARM, auto ranging mod module. Cryptech, Cryptech just subbed. Never would I have thought. Let's put you up on the board. Oh yeah, I need to activate the board too. It's so, it's so humid and I'm so tired today that <laughs> I'm, I'm like not, I'm, I'm, I'm negligent in my duties. My duty. So yeah, let's turn the board on. I had to restart the board. I don't know what happened. I think whatever problem we had earlier, like compounded and finally, finally led to the board like failing in some way. So I restarted the board earlier. It should still be on that. Yeah, if the blue light's on, that means it's going. Oh, and there's Cryptek going in. So now we activate it. Pop. There's 5,200 names on the board right now and 6,000 was sort of our average limit that we were able to get in simulations. So we were about 800 names from full, from theoretical full. Beep, boop, beep. We're walking, we're walking, we're walking. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like any day now we're one Rabaz raid away from filling the board permanently. And then I got to explain that. No, I didn't. I have a feeling that's what caused it to fail, though. Like, if... Man, it's so weird how trained I am with the board. Cryptech, welcome to the board! You're by flatulent force and fill powers and lost algorithm, and I like balls in my... Ah, damn it. Um, yeah, uh, whatever was keeping me from logging in, I bet is what eventually took it down. Um, but all I had to do was restart it, and then it was fine. I'm trained. Like, if I, if I walk into here, and I don't see any lights on, on Burn the Subs, I freak out. <laughs> like, <laughs> I go crazy. So this, I it was yesterday, yesterday I walked, like, yesterday in the middle of the time when I should have been streaming, um, the board went dark. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on here? Unplugged it, plugged it back in, went on WinSCP, and I was able to log in and start it up again. So I don't know what, what happened with the network and everything. It was working, though, when, when I wasn't able to log into it. So I don't know what the Raspberry Pi, like, junked its uh, ability to have, like, a terminal connect to it or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what it was. So we got to do a little bit of Fusion 360 here, which, you know, I've had open for a week now. Nice cave. It's not a cave. It's, it's, it's not a cave. Caves are underground. I'm... I'm partially underground. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> no, caves aren't underground. I just wanted to make the comparison. Um, so yeah. <laughs> this stuff is awesome. It was really expensive. It's easy for me to work with, though, because I don't need to use power tools to cut it, which I'm pretty happy about. I know everybody calls it a man cave. I call it a shop, and my nephew says, but you're not selling anything. How is it a shop? I'm like, hmm. <laughs> of the guy with rock um yeah this this stuff is cool i would love to be able to bend the edges of that and that would be the easiest way for me to mount this bend the edges and then just use the the inset uh the little whatchamacallits ah chewy chocolatey crunchy hershey's whatchamacallit i don't know where they went i had oh there it is use these little cleats inside of it inside the rail because these are made for maker beam this is hard to show this is made for Maker Beam, right? It's supposed to go inside of the rails. And then I could have 
well, the, the problem is, you know, getting the coherent look is one thing, but also this fastener doesn't even fit in the hexagons. So it needs something around it. And I've, I've been thinking about how to do that. I mean, I could try to play with bending it and that would produce, uh, I mean, that would get us closer to that look, you know, the look of having um, the anodized stuff next to the, this is gloss black. I kind of wish it was matte. <laughs> but my thoughts on it... Hold on, I'm going to cough. I slept really bad, so my throat is, like, super scratchy. I'll get, I'll get some seltzer and start, start hydrating in a minute here. I put a picture of my bracket in personal project channel. That is lewd. That is lewd, and I'm looking immediately. Hold on, let me see. What do we got? Personal project... Why are there so many channels in this fucking Discord? Whose is this? Uh, anyway, let's see. That is a cool looking bracket. You're using larger rail too. Here, let's take a look. This is what uh, Nothing's Working has been working on. Nothing's Working has been doing a very similar project. It's just mine is VCR shaped. <laughs> mine is VCR shaped. But yeah, that, that, is a, that is a nice bracket. I like that bracket a lot. That's not quite, I mean, it's close. But yeah, bending the edge of this. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, bending the edge of this so that you don't like catch your fingers on it or something. I have a different strategy that I'm thinking of doing, and it's going to push my 3D printer to the max because I need something to print on basically the entire bed. So I need to figure out how to split it up. I think it needs to be split up in order to print properly. My So far, everything that I've made for the 3D printer has been in the in the front right corner. My printer, like, microscopically has kind of like a concave shape to it. So stuff around the middle doesn't really print all that well. And stuff on the other side often does not either. And it's something that I've needed to correct, but it's so time consuming that I haven't bothered. Things on the front right print perfectly. Like, I can hit Control-P, I can wait four hours, and then I'll have a nice looking functional back panel piece. Like I love that, uh, that the printer being in the state where I can hit control P and poop out something like this in a couple hours. Very nice. I don't even care that there's like inconsistencies here. Um, I'm going for like a hex, hex grid, purple, black and silver kind of theme. The carbon fiber almost stands out at this point. So what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking we can do in order to mount the grating on the top and to give it a bit more of a cohesive look and i don't know if this is going to be too intrusive with the purple but make something that goes up against here we'll do this as a display something like this so i'll have purple piece and i'll have to cut that corner in by the way purple piece that goes not just in the corner but it go it'll go throughout the entire run and it'll just be this much distance and then we'll have a cut on the corner, like a chamfer on the corner, or a, 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 a fillet, I forget. Chamfer is round, fillet is, is uh, a straight line. I don't know about these fasteners though, because everywhere else, everywhere else the style that we're doing is this. And I even put decorative screws in this. By the way, the misprint, the misprint of the graphics card holder provided me with a tool that I could use in order, because the the infernal the infernal uh, X shift, my X axis is shifting every now and again, and I don't know what it is. Maybe one of the bearings has gone bad, but it's like one in one in five prints. Maybe yeah, one in one in ten. I think one in ten will get a a a chronic uh, shift only on the axis that goes back and forth on the rail. The, the, the bed going front and backwards, always fine. The z-axis, probably always fine. It's just that x-axis, and I think there's, it's either over-tensioned rollers or uh, bearing, like something in the bearing that limits it. I don't know which it is. Uh, I don't know how to investigate it because it's, it's not a repeating problem. It's a, it's a weird intermittent problem. Anyway, the, the misprint of the front piece provided me with a perfect two millimeter plate that I could put a screw into and then file it down until it was it was even with the base there. So that's what that's what these screws are. These screws don't hold anything together. If I really wanted to make those screws functional, and I probably should have because you can see glue in a couple areas here. If I really wanted to make those screws functional and, and preserve this seam, I probably could have had a piece that goes all the way up on the interior of this pillar 
that meets with that screw. So I would have I would have an inside post, and then this piece of plastic would go on the outside of that. It would just be a, like a either round or just uh, like a weird whatever weird shape I could make there and give it a gap of 0.2, and then this thing plop plop down, put the screw on top, and that would actually hold it together. So I could take it apart again. But I don't need to take it apart again. This is just a piece of rubber. <laughs> it's just a big rubber block. Yeah, I, I, I don't have the only ones that I have are like eight millimeters long. So I don't have I don't have a hyper long version of that. And if I wanted to, I guess I could do it in use a use a cap head hex, which I definitely have a cap head hex that goes all the way down there. But uh, I I wanted to keep this look going because we've got it here and here. Now I've got it on that block. I guess I can't really do that with the power supply. Oh yeah, by the way, I found I found LEDs. I found cool looking LEDs for this. I found some oranges and one blue that don't have that little lens on top of them. So this is now orange with blue being triggered by the, the speed of the fan that it's trying to run. So the blue will get brighter as things get hotter and they'll be orange otherwise. And it'll be dim orange that's not going to be super duper bright. These are, these are not, they don't have any, um, blah what is it diffusion on them so it'll just be a little dot of orange light it might be kind of bright but i do have an 800 ohm resistor on that so that's it's eight, five volts 800 ohm resistor that thing's not going to be all that bright um but it'll make a little bit of light in this area i'm concerned about the heat in this area though i guess the graphics card fans will hopefully churn up some of the uh some of the heat in this area but yeah there's a th this is like an air dam for everything else um so I, I replaced those LEDs. Those were from that spark fun grab bag that, that uh, a viewer sent me. There were also like uh, diffused white LEDs on that. And I was looking at that diffused white LED and it's got a pretty good look to it. It looks pretty nice. I was tempted to use it, but I don't want white LEDs inside of this thing. This is blue and orange and purple. That's, those are the colors that I'm going for. There really isn't that much blue representation. I guess I could reprint this stuff in blue. I kind of like it in purple though. So yeah, anyway, to mount the, the grating, the hexagonal grating that I, I <laughs> that comes to us at much expense, um, I'm thinking purple outline. I don't have a, a screw that is flush. I mean, we could use these. These seem a little small, but maybe if we have multiple sections, I could have the sections bolt into one another and then have one of these, or one of the, one of these. Because I could have, I could have a screw in the corner and then like one, two, and then another one. And that would cut the size down because even this, this took four hours to print. So if we go with that size, I, I'll i need multiple, like two sections on the sides here, and then probably three, well, almost two for this. So I guess I could get away with, I could almost, let me see the, let me go look at the printer. I haven't, I, this is the first time I'm actually facing uh, all these problems head on. I've been playing around and just like cutting pieces of this this hex grid stuff it's nice to have though this stuff looks good but anyway let me go let me go check this with a 3d printer was real man cave a show i remember a friend of mine wanted to try to get on one of those like home makeover shows for man caves oh that ain't gonna no that ain't, that ain't gonna do it it's gonna have to be multiple sections no matter what yeah this this grid is is larger than my print bed by something like two centimeters. <laughs> so I got to figure out how we're going to mount this thing. And I, I think I'm going with that style. So we'll keep that cohesive. <sighs> My body is at war with me now because I, I had the audacity to eat lunch. <laughs> it's like, hold on. I'm just going to... We're just going to try to eject our contents real quick. So the other thing that I need to do is figure out how I'm going to mount these fans. Uh, and I'll be using, I'm not going to be printing, this was hell. This was hell to design in Fusion. It hates, Fusion hates it when you have 10,000 little hexagonal shapes that it has to track. So I probably could have saved it without history and it might have sped it up a little bit, but I don't want to go back into that. I don't want to make, unless I'm doing just a little bit of a grading for flair, um, I'm not going to go back and design this part again, but this is what I have in mind for the fans. We'll have to mount the grating. It'll need like a lip around it that will screw in 
and then make that, we'll, we'll figure this out later, but I mean, that's one of the other problems that I have. So now I've got to design 10,000 3D printed parts. One concern though that I have is if the power supply gets too hot. I don't think it's gonna get quite to 80 degrees, but it has in the past gotten hot enough that I would be concerned about anything involving a 3D print in the vicinity. Am I gonna have to do a set? Well, I'm not gonna do a full set change. I'll just refresh this thing. Yeah, four units left. Oh boy. It's nice that they have dark red on gray because that's really easy to read. God. So yeah, I, I need to I need to refill this thing with insulin. <laughs> you guys will have to bear with me for just a minute here. But yeah, that's a that's a great bracket design. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is have something that rides along the rails, and it it'll give it'll give the grating a lip so that it's not sharp, <laughs> and then we'll be able to we'll be able to get the rest of that thing together. So I already have uh, that syringe I found earlier, a random bottle of insulin that I got off the street. Basically what you have to do with this pump, because of the draw and inject system that it has, this pump uh, stores your insulin in a bag. It keeps the insulin in a little baggie, uh, which means that the shape of this thing, because of the rechargeable battery and the fact that your insulin is in a bag, means that this pump doesn't have to have large round shapes to it. And it helps make it look like a piece of modern technology, which I enjoy, <laughs> that and the touch screen. So, Problem with your insulin being in a bag is that you can't have just like an adapter to fill a reservoir. You have to draw insulin into a syringe, which it's actually been pretty convenient that I've got a lot of these syringes around because uh, what's that? If you turn off the display of profile, the performance will be much better. Display of profiles for making large patterns, interesting. I'll, if that comes up again, I'm just gonna, for, for the time being, and because this build is grading based, uh, it, it's all, it, it, any of those patterns that I try to create are gonna be part of that look. So it's better that I use the grading instead of 3D printing it. But in the future, if I do something like that with a design, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. All right, so I need to re-up this thing with insulin options, load, change cartridge, yes. I'm still trying to kind of stock up on supplies. I like to have like a month or two uh, extra supplies so that when there is a problem, oops, wait, hold on. Is the cartridge installed? Uh, no. There, do that, okay. I need to break the air gap too when I fill this actually. So let me do that first. Let me do that before filling it, which means I need to pry this thing open. This little thing right there. There's a, there's, we've seen it by the way, when we took apart the insulin pump, uh, the, uh, the previous version I had of this thing, but that's an, that's an air pressure uh, thing. So there's a sensor in there that reads the ambient air pressure, and then it reads what the pressure is inside here, because it actually creates a little seal on that, on that rubber disc. And when it, it reads pressure going down, that's how it knows that you're using the insulin. That's how it gives a, an assessment of the fill, the fill level of the reservoir. <laughs> yeah, it's like refilling. It's like refilling printer ink, and it's just as expensive too. God, that was uh, three hundred units out of the. I think it's a hundred thousand. No, three hundred units, three days, a hundred a day, uh, three bottles a month. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna do all those calculations. I don't want to do the dimensional analysis, but we could calculate how expensive that full syringe was. Insulin is not cheap. All right, do that. Beep, boop, beep. And now here's, here's the biggest affront to the, to the expenditure on insulin, right? In order to prime this, it has me fill this tubing. It will not allow me to use the insulin pump until it is primed 10 units. So we're literally just squirting 10 units of insulin onto the floor. And I, I, there's nothing I can do about that. It doesn't, it doesn't let me run this thing unless it's done this step. They want you to keep buying bags. No, 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 no. It's the, um, the bottles, it's the bottles. The, the bags, I, I should be replacing this stuff, but I'm, I'm reusing it. I should be replacing all this. Um, because that, the, the reservoir, the tube, the, the patch on my on my skin are uh, those are the disposable parts that you should be changing every three days. I push it a little further than that.
because sometimes I'm like working on cars and stuff and I'll brush that patch area and it'll come off or I'll catch, I'll catch this tube on a kitchen cabinet, which I've done a lot. Here, let me throw some money on the floor just to spite you. I know it expects me to be using new equipment. So the 10 units would just fill up that tube. Test flying my mini drone. There's no wind outside. Got it up in the air. Wind comes and now it's stuck in the gutters of my barn. Oh no, <laughs> you're going to have to get somebody to fish it out. Yeah, every three days. And that's actually more of a health thing, the three day thing. It's, I mean, partially because a device of this size, you know, you can't hold that much. But every three days, uh, because of uh, what your body is doing to the, the patch that's in it constantly, it's trying to fight it away. So, yeah, get a drone to rescue the drone. <laughs> a drone with a hook, a magnet. Now it's thinking about its life choices. And now here's, here's an absolutely ridiculous number of screens that I have to go through until it resumes insulin. Done. Okay, done. Test your BG. And then there's another one that says, hey, should I resume insulin? Yes, of course you should fucking resume insulin. Then you get the splashy screen and then everything is running again. So now I've got insulin. I got to plug back into this thing though. There's a, there's a disconnect. It's a quick disconnect on the, on the thing itself, which is kind of annoying. The, like there shouldn't be a lure lock here. The lure lock, while nice to have, is not necessary on this kit, but they don't want to include the tube with everything, I guess, because people get different lengths of tubes and they get different uh, styles of, of infusion sets, which I, I haven't really tried many. I got this one because it has a stainless steel needle that's directly into the skin at a 90 degree angle, which is pretty brutal. You don't feel it. It's pretty brutal considering everything else. Electrip, thank you for following. But having a 90 degree stainless steel needle in your skin can be kind of painful in certain situations. But the advantage of it is that it does not occlude and an occlusion is a blockage of the tube. So I was using a fancy, fancy pantsy insulin for a little while and it would tend to occlude a lot. And if you have a plastic tube going under the skin, I mean, you know, bodies wiggle around. They're, they're basically jello. So you can kink that tube and then you won't get insulin. Yeah, it was um, 15 minute fast acting insulin, but it didn't work with this pump because the pump draws and injects like a, like a mini syringe. It puts a lot of stress on the protein chains and they, they at the time that insulin wasn't stabilized by, I think there's like a sulfur agent that they had that uh, stabilizes it and it keeps it from, for the proteins from collapsing on each other and becoming blobs that clog tubes. So in this pump, it would put it through so much stress. You shouldn't shake insulin, by the way. Insulin is like a fairly fragile, giant protein chain. Um, but yeah, it got shook and then it no longer worked. Hey, insulin, you gotta keep it at a certain temperature range. You can't shake it. You can't scare it. You can't, you can't go boo around it or else it, you know, it goes off. It's pretty crazy stuff. All right, anyway, that's out of the way now. I can I can resume activities as if I didn't have diabetes, right? Do I need more insulin? I get 35 units of I planned 35 carbs for that bowl of rice and chicken and salsa. Uh, well, so far there's nothing nothing happening on that. Yeah, I heard Walmart is is now in the insulin business, and it turns out that Walmart insulin is actually the same the same stuff that I use. I think. Or it's Novalin. It's not Novalin R. I'm using R, which is the one that's famous for being the exact same formula for the last 20 years, plus 25 years or something, and nobody's done anything to to improve it. It sounds like an interesting movie if this is a bomb. <laughs> Don't scare the insulin. It's the name of my new game. Um. Anyway, we're back. We're back. Uh, so... We got to figure out how we're going to mount the grating. And this is one strategy of just putting it in the corner. And because this is like steel grating, that's going to be super strong and it'll be totally fine, except if you brush your hand against it. But that, that would have been the prevailing strategy were my hardware a little larger and possibly bending the ends here and just making something that, you know, would bolt to over there. But I actually worked with one of the people that helped discover activated insulin. I didn't know until he received a Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, that's cool. Yeah, what is it with activated? I never really looked into that. Activated insulin versus uh, 
you know, the, the stuff that you, yeah. This is aluminum and not steel. Oh, so that's pretty light then. Yeah, the difference in weight between the stuff that I used to use and this aluminum hexagonal grid is pretty extreme. It's nice to have a lighter material on this thing because it was, it was getting a little heavy. One time I froze 10 vials of insulin. Oh, no. It was on my way back from Minnesota to Kentucky after graduate school. The heater in my very old van couldn't keep up. Oh, that sucks. I once, when I was a, when I was a teenager, I had a bottle of insulin in my pocket. And I, I don't know, we were just being goofy teenagers at a party. And I slid, and I slid into the wall, like a, a stone wall. And uh, the pocket that the insulin was in popped it. <laughs> So I had to pick glass out of my pocket. It smelled like insulin. I probably got a couple cuts. Yeah. Insulin comes as PIPO insulin. Wait, what? Pre-PRO insulin. It needs to be chopped up by enzymes into the biologically active form. Oh, cool. Man, this bio stuff. I was never good at bio stuff. I, I took one organic chemistry class and I was done. I was like, I'm not, I can't, I can't doctor. I can't, I mean, I, I, you know, I feel like if I applied myself well enough, I could be a doctor. There's some idiotic doctors out there. Um, I would probably fit in with them just fine. There's all kinds of really stupid people. Um, but, <laughs> you know, being a doctor, I was like, I don't, I don't know about the whole biology thing. And then I got to organic chemistry and I was like, oh, no, no thanks. I don't know how people do chemistry. I, don't, I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't know how they look at those little hexagonal things and they go, this plus this equals this. It was so, such an affront to anything that I, I know how to do, I know how to do numbers. Numbers never hurt me. <laughs> numbers, numbers never made me cry. Actually, they did. Control systems made me cry. Awful, evil tears. Um... Yeah, so basically your shit's all whack. Yeah, exactly. I was never good at the biology thing, but I my dad's a doctor, and so I know a lot of medical stuff. Also through just, just basically osmosis of being exposed to it my whole life with diabetes since I was nine years old. So like I know some of that stuff and I find it interesting, but I, I don't understand a lot of the stuff. Like, yeah, chopping up a, a protein chain by enzymes to turn it into a biologically active uh, hormone is, is insane to me. <laughs> that stuff is fuck, fucking magic. It's straight up fucking magic. I'm the opposite. I couldn't deal with numbers, so I went into biological research. Do you guys, like, memorize all those chemical equations? How does that work? How do you know, how do you know the products of stuff? I guess that's probably a deeper question than... than, than <laughs> it's a hard-to-answer hard question in a Twitch chat. <sighs> all right, so... These parts printed, I'm happy with this one. I probably could do something with these little pieces here. Probably could like make the end of them look a little better, but I I'm gonna keep it just cause it's weird. It's like, it's kind of weird. And I like that it's kind of weird. That still is a lot of math. Uh, it's just a language that you learn. Well, I'm, I, I know language America. I speak America here, so I'm not. I'm not learning. Fr learn a language. It's like learning a language. Fuck. Fuck languages. I'm American. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know a universal language. American. I mean math. I mean math. Universal language is math. Uh, <laughs> math is a language. I beat you to it, even though there's a de there's a delay. So you do, you don't know that I beat you to it, but I beat you to it. I'm better than you. All right. Um. We're done with this. This looks good. Uh, one, one, my one complaint about fusion is that I can't pull in a mesh so that this looks more like the actual part. I can't pull a mesh in here. Maybe I could try to figure that out at some point, but it's part of like the voodoo of uh, Fusion 360 that I don't yet understand. I don't know how to pull a mesh into here. I know how to cut this mesh in order to make it look really good in the part. You know? I do. I have uh, chat bought it for me, and they they bought it for me in part to spite me. Let's be honest, because it is the because I I kept going off about how I don't need a hot air station. Like I could I could do something with this if I had a hot air station, but I don't, so it doesn't matter. And then of course they bought me a hot air station, and it happens to also be another thing that I complained. Ah, uh, Lewis Rossman uses way too much flux. Nobody can afford that much flux. They bought me Lewis Rossman's. 
hot air station with the 45 degree angle tips, which were apparently extremely expensive, so that you can get a camera in there. Fuming about the fumes, yeah. So the hot air station that I have is a quick 8610, uh, eight, sorry, quick 861DW. 861D is in Daniel, W is in whiskey. Um, and, and it's been a good hot air station. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it. It's, it's nice, but I use it occasionally. What's up, pickle liquor? That wasn't, that wasn't me. That wasn't, that wasn't me just harassing. That wasn't me just harassing somebody in chat. Like if I called Dewey a pickle liquor, I don't think I'd be able to sleep at night. Um, that was an actual username. That's, uh, that's actually a username. It's not, I wasn't just calling him. I wasn't, I, I'm not like that. I'm not like that chat. <laughs> Dewey left. Oh no. <laughs> I've been working for, uh, looking for a decent rework station that isn't crap, but is on the cheaper side. The quickest 220 volt. There's probably a 220 volt uh, version of it. The one I, I mean, I'm in America. Uh, it's 115. He forced me to rename myself. <laughs> he bullied me into calling myself Picker. Warhorse 70, thank you for subbing. Let's put you up on the board. I can be properly loud today, guys. I'm home alone. I'm home alone. My parents don't even know. <laughs> I'm going to cook stuff in the oven. And get into the garbage. <laughs> no, I can be, I can actually be like uh, theatrical and pontificate. Even though the neighbors will think I am insane. It's nice to be able to be full volume for once. I can't imagine what it's like for somebody who doesn't stream to live with somebody who does stream. Like, what do my roommates think of me when I am down here being a goofball with you guys? And they're just upstairs, like, trying to watch TV, and they just hear me like... <laughs> And like weird noises and hammering. <laughs> it's gotta be hell. War Horse 70, welcome to the board. You're by Hit Me Baby one more time. Oh, that's a hmm. pickle liquor sub for eight months. I've always been working with academia, it's a labor of love. Yeah. Make blowtorch traps for burglars. I gotta find my micro machines. <laughs> oh man, my cameras have dust on them. God, it's so like balmy. It's like it's like 70 degrees, right? The temperature is kind of comfortable, but it's like 70 degrees and humid. It's a terrible combo. Did pickle liquor already get into the board? What's going on here? Well, now there there he is on the the. Oh, that's Doctor Plugger. We've got two names here. Come on. Let's go. Let's go Wi-Fi. Let's get hyphy with it. Where is my hype? Come on! <laughs> what's... Okay, what's going on here? Did, like... Did this fail? No. No. It's the children who are wrong. Oh, there we go! Did Pickle Liquor announce early? Did you get into a weird situation? That might be what's going on. Oh, we got bits too! Dr. Plugger with a prime for 24 months. Pickle Liquor with 8 months. Fathoms. F -A -F F4. Toms 88. I think it's Fathoms 88. Thank you for the bits. 10 bits. This one's Dr. Plugger. What happened to Pickle Liquor? We'll take a look. I gotta do, we gotta do board maintenance. I think Pickle Liquor had that early announcement thing and he got himself into a situation. Short Lurker's done this as well. I fucked it again. Yeah, what did you do? <laughs> Why? Twitch, 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 your platform for adults. People can say fuck, I don't know why. <laughs> Auto mod was like, oh, that's a that's an evil and uh, hmm, can't let them say that. Wayne Johnson, thank you for the hundred bits. Look at all these bitums. You guys actually made a hype train. Hey, let's take a look at burn the subs and what's wrong with it. So win SCP, and then for some reason the new win SCP update. I have to click new session, which I don't appreciate. But anyway, let's go into burn the subs. 
Oh, is the whole phrase? You can't say I fucked it on Twitch? I mean, you can. We just allowed that. So you guys, you guys can now run buck wild with this, uh, this new phrase that you have. All right, so it doesn't look like much is going on here, but what I need to do is I need to go into the screen, figure out what's happening. Do I have to do the dash R on it? I think I do, right? Yeah, dash, dash R takes you to the other screen. Screen just opens up a new screen. And if I've got more than two screens open, I need to reference it by ID, which is really annoying. You need like a six digit number. It's so obnoxious. So screen dash R takes us to our other screen. We can see sender's active. Next ping in 175 seconds. Dr. Plugger placed in, oof, that's, uh, that's 10 milliseconds. That's, uh, that's a long time. Dr. Plugger's been burned. We've got 5240 names on the board currently. That was the question last time. On Tuesday, I was asked, how many names are on the board? Well, it's, I was like, ah, it's over 5,000. No, it's 5240. So we don't know anything else that's going on here. I can control A and then detach the screen by hitting D. I'll bring us back to our Raspberry Pi's command line. Tmux makes that easier. I don't know how many unique names. I don't know, that's a big database search. That, okay, so here's what we need to do. I need to look at the log. So in the BTS2 folder, I have the websocket log.txt. Let's take a look at that, see what's up. See what's good. Because I don't know if, if the name fails, I don't think it updates the number of months. So, name was seen in the last 25 days. This one is an exemption. It's older than 25 days. There are, basically what happens is, uh, because of the way the Twitch API works, I get this, this long WebSocket response, right? This JSON, J-S-O-N, not J-A-S-O-N. This JSON response. An anonymous cheer, thank you for the 100 bits. Appreciate the 100 bits, Nani. Anani, mus, mus. Um, so I get all this data, and this is actually not the entirety of the data that I get. This, this piece of web socketeering is in another JSON return. We've got this, this JSON return that is part of another JSON return, and it's sent in the message text with the brackets and everything. It's so weird. So... Yeah, because I subbed before my old sub ran out. It won't use it. Yeah, that's the thing. So you gotta, yeah, you gotta let it run out and then redo it. I've never been able to announce early like that before. Like, I'm subbed to Rabaz, and I don't think I've ever been able to announce it early. Um, so yeah, what happened to Pickle Licker is that the name was in there, and it wasn't older than 25. 25 is giving it wiggle room, too. 25 is a month to us, apparently. So somehow it was early enough that it triggered that. I could roll back his number of months uh, in the database. That would allow him to do this again. Of course, it would update, and then it would probably not allow it. There's a lot of weird stuff about this JSON return that I really don't like. We don't have a unique ID in this JSON return. If there was a unique transaction ID, then I would be able to parse that and, and store it and, and figure out if somebody was subbing you know, was cheating the system or if they had a new sub. Plavatos, thank you for subbing. Let's put you up on the board. Well, the board's gonna take a little bit. I'll wait until I hear it come to life. Um, actually, we can take a look at it from this perspective. Screen R. Oops, I hit enter. Oh, that didn't that didn't bother it. Let's wait. Plavatos is about to come in there. Stress testing my system. My system is good. It worked well. Um, Basically, what happens is the name has to go, there it goes, placed in 0.003, three milliseconds, man. And then we've got an update on what it's doing, how many lines of code it is, one ready to burn, 5241 are about to be burned. Let's put Plavatos up on the board. Ah, it hit the camera. <laughs> Luckily, the stepper motors are strong enough that they can just beast it out of the way. Why is this thing not? There we go. I gotta like grease my camera mount. Jeez. <laughs> the hype train just end. 
Plavatos. Welcome to the board. Level one hype train emote. Yeah. Plavatos. Plavatos. I don't know how to say your name. It's you're by 1080 easy. Minus nine. Lumberjacks one. Yo, mama's here. Sasquatch Mitch. Mars meh. <laughs> All right. So yeah, um, Pickle Liquor, do you want me to get you on the board? Because you're probably not going to be able to announce it again. Uh, I can go through the steps. I can, I can pop you into the database and fix it, basically. No, you're good? Okay. All right. I'm going to take you up on that because it, it, it is a major pain in the ass for me to insert people manually. I just hope we can remember next time. Just give it a couple days and it'll, it'll still keep your streaks and everything. You're already up there a few times. See, generally, I don't accept that from people, and I go through the steps of actually adding the name and stuff, because, uh, you know, that's part of the transaction. If you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. I'm not going to worry about it. We got a lot of work to do anyway uh, today. But yeah, so what happens is, um, for those of you in chat, you got to be aware, uh, sometimes Twitch will let you announce early, and I don't know how to... I, there's not much I can do about that, because... The, the early announcement lets people, it, there's an early announcement and then there's a late announcement, during which time it is a valid subscription and I get the same JSON return. From early and from late, I get the same exact fucking JSON return. So what people have been able to do is actually take it so that they were able to announce. I had Dat Dietz, who uh, not, never, never blame somebody for breaking the board, by the way. Never do this. This is entirely Twitch's fault, and it came to light from Dat Dietz subbing three times in a day, but he didn't actually. It was like canceling payment types, doing something weird, and then also abusing the system where you can announce early and late. So that's that's a possibility. Users can do that. They're, they're very much capable of doing that and ruining the system by which the board operates, which is you pay for a subscription, you get your name on the board. So what I had to do is I had to, make a gaunt, I had to make a gauntlet of rules that the name has to go through, and if it applies to the exceptions, then it gets burnt. So that's what this that's that's the phrasing of this. Name was last seen in 25 days. Name ignored, no no exceptions applied. So if it was seen in was seen in the last 25 days, that's that means it 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 didn't pass, like, I don't know. One of the things, I guess, we had it. We had it trigger the text just so that I'd know. But like older, older than twenty-five day is is usually what we get, and that just means the name is passed through the gauntlet. Does it work when you aren't streaming? Yes, it it runs twenty-four-seven except for a brief window when I had to reset it uh, yesterday. It runs twenty-four-seven. It stores names in the database, and then when I start streaming, because I'm not allowed to have an unattended stream, you see, it, it could technically. I could email Twitch and make an exception where um, the channel would go live automatically and burn the name, you know, when I get all the cameras sorted out. But I don't really want to do that because this is technically, I mean, this laser is technically producing smoke and ash. And I, I, I need to be here to observe it while it's operating and I need to have an attended stream. So what, I, what happens is the name gets stored and until I hit that button on the front, it just sits in the database. It sits in the database with its status being unburnt. And then I come along, I pop the button, and then it'll burn. Yeah, it's just just a just a small fire hazard. I don't want to get back from the grocery store to a charred, you know, to the charred remnants of my shop. <laughs> I think an, an attended open laser burning system is a relatively good idea. Yeah, you know. In the pantheon of ideas, that one is generally highly regarded. Christian Emily. Sorry, Christian Emile. Just subbed with a prime. Let's put you up on the board. Thank you for that prime. If those of you at home have prime, use it. Use it on your favorite streamer. Use them primes, people. So we're waiting for a new prime to come up into the board. There it goes. So I also, in addition to having text on a console, I also have a couple of LEDs that are running directly off of the Raspberry Pi. Physical computing with Python 3 and a Raspberry Pi is a lot of fun. 
I'll tell you that much. It's a lot of fun. Everything just kind of like, you know, if you want to light up a bunch of LEDs or something, ah! there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. Whoop, there we go. And then you could also run multiple threads. Christian Emily, welcome to the board. I keep saying Emily, it's Emil. Christian Emil. You're right on top of fourth magnitude. Fatadon just subbed. This is my prime gaming sub. It doesn't say it's prime though. <laughs> That's tier three, holy fuck. Burn cam seems to have got a bit too much laser light on its sensor. Yeah, it's, it's you know. I don't know if it, the ultraviolet component is actually damaging these webcams. It's possible. Tier three. Fat Anon, thank you so much. Holy shit. Put them up on the board. It is very bright over here, by the way. This is actually a very bright section of the shop. Man, it's balmy in here today. Ugh. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go check the AC settings. <laughs> Can't afford to be running the AC this hard, though. Get a heat wave, piece of shit, heat wave. We're walking, and we're walking, and we're walking. There we go, Fadanon, going by notes and volts. Yeah, it's. I think that's. The, I think that's all the extensions on the webcam. Oh, look at the 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 lens flare. Hey, maybe the camera didn't fully uh, initialize. See that right there? That weirdness. I think is caused by part of the camera that's supposed to be able to run like a. Um, it's supposed to be able to do that thing where you have it take a picture of the background and then you go into the picture and it green screens you. 82 with 45% humidity in, in Iowa. Ugh, I think we're like 60s, right? Yeah, in a comfy little spot. Where was it again? It was above Notes and Volts. That's right. Look at that. It looks like part of Notes and Volts logo. Okay, Ugh. Um, what were we going to do? Uh, I, was, I was just saying, there's nothing I can do to track these into individual, individual uh, subscriptions. Uh, the problem is, there's no unique identifier for the transaction. They do it with channel points. Believe it or not, in the JSON return for channel points, you get an individually numbered... It's got like a like an alphanumerical ID on it, right? You don't get that with subscriptions, and subscriptions are the one people are actually paying money for. I really wish I could do that. No, the time the time is the time sent. Time is always the time sent. It has nothing to do with the time of the of the sub. It's so annoying. I need a transaction ID, but I don't get one. See this that date code right there is like the ugh, damn it. Yeah, this is just this is just like uh, universal time or whatever, but that's that's of the transaction. So it's like it's not sorry, not the transaction. That's of the that's of when they subbed or when it was sent. That's when the message was sent. It's the most useless piece of shit uh, uh, field I've ever seen in my entire life. This JSON is full of this. It's full of these obnoxious. There's multi month duration over here. There's month months. Uh, and then I think there's another one too. Resub, context resub, subplan prime. It's just the, it's just bad. <laughs> it's just bad. There are yeah, cumulative months is the third one. So it's it's multi month duration, cumulative months, and months. What, what am I doing with the three fields of data? And by the way, the ones that aren't used will get zeroed out and the number will transfer to the other one. So I had to make all this logic in there in order to check to see what people were doing. <sighs> yeah, I do. I have a plugin that'll, that'll J format the JSON. We just read it like this for convenience. These will check it when somebody uh, already subbed a bunch of times 
let it through even if it's not 25 days uh but the problem is then you get that deets who has followed the channel since the very beginning and then messes it up right because that's the type i mean that's the type of people we have here we've got a bunch of got a bunch of what is it uh black hat what is the what is that red hat i don't know you guys you guys like to break stuff and that's fine that's good that makes my stuff stronger but uh i can't yeah i can't put in like a weird i have the rules and we vetted them out and it was very difficult to come up with there's like a couple things great i don't know what the hats are i don't know why everybody's wearing hats suddenly um why are we talking about hats i don't know is this what is this hat um free hat <laughs> put on your engineering hat um yeah anyway so it's just it's just annoying like that i i just need to like vet the names out in a bunch of different ways in order to figure out whether or not they're they apply and then there's the one exception which is exactly what happened to pickle liquor uh it happened to squirrel it happened to uh short lurker where they're able to sub but it's technically within 25 days of the other sub even though it's a legitimate sub so if it says your your sub your sub or you can or your sub expires in a couple days or whatever don't announce it don't announce the resub until those days have expired i guess i don't know how to handle it i don't know how to handle it it's obnoxious all right anyway so we're trying to mount speaker mesh trying to mount mesh mush mouth mesh close that are you sure you want to close yeah pretty sure no i don't want to update okay so let's build some shit yeah exactly yeah pretty idiotic subs don't get a unique id when that happens but channel points where they thought about it yep it said add that to subs they ignore it thanks twitch exactly i've been bitching about this for like a year um they will add a unique transaction id to a new system that doesn't actually involve money and then they won't put something like that into the system that actually does evolve money involve money i could get rid of like 50 lines of code if they did that i would just simply store the transaction id and check against it and that's it that's all i would need to do and then and then all of that logic of me vetting out whether or not the sub is like new or the same number of months i wouldn't have to do but we had to come up with this big brain tease that was like well but if this applies to this situation this applies to this situation wait what about this what about this situation there's like 50 cases that we had to like make sure the new api they have the subs transaction id it's only for the new first hold on let me see let me see because we got a new first time sub we got a new prime sub that was uh christian emily i say emily it's emil uh bah, 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 bah. where am i going uh when scp bah, 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 bah. 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 yeah the thing is like if it's only for new subs like the first time they sub it needs to be for every transaction otherwise it's it's useless to me <laughs> older than oh new entry there we go there it is so the channel id to user id that's just user information sub name channel subscription no bother is gift false channel name so bother great benefit of the month this is all pointless data cumulative months one display name there's christian emil ah, my, my brain wants to say emily there's the date username multi-month zero sub plan prime contact sub sub message emotes null message yeah, i didn't add any fields to this this is the same as it was same as it ever was i don't see no transaction id when we were looking through the channel points thing they just have this nice like yeah not in pub sub oh okay that's a different api one of the many completely undocumented apis is part of twitch bonk okay so helix api not the old kraken stuff i didn't i didn't think this was kraken keep trying maybe you'll learn danish in the end <laughs> that'd be great <laughs> and speak like the danes wait doesn't that involve copious amounts of of uh alcohol hey juice box hero can you fix this 
This is something that I've been bitching about for like three, no, maybe two years, ever since the inception of Burn the Subs. There's the system where you can announce your sub early and late. And the thing is around here, when you sub to Twitch on my channel, you get a fairly permanent, a fairly permanent reward. It's at least permanent on my behalf because I get your name on my wall. Thanks to this wonderful Twitch API powered Raspberry Pi subsystem. That guy who made the channel point watering thing and won $50,000 in a contest. Nobody knows about my board. Anyway, it's Raspberry Pi, lots of Python, couple of threads, Twitch API, XY laser etcher, and water cooled because it's funny. Back over to here, what happens is somebody subs, I get this big JSON return, and I have absolutely no way to figure out the uniqueness of the JSON return for my little database. See, all the, there's a couple threads that sort of stay up on the Twitch API, and they kind of they kind of see that everything's good. They're like, what's good, my man? Twitch API hangs out, and then it gives me a JSON return. When it does that, I parse it out to make sure that the name contains letters that I actually have a font for, as well as being the right length and stuff like that. And then we leave Twitch to uh, do its own thing and vet out all the naughty names, which is why there are so many filthy names on this board. Anyway, so all that stuff happens in the, in the background, and I have this gauntlet of rules. I have this gauntlet of rules that the names have to apply to because there are weird exceptions with the system where wherein wherein people were actually capable of getting three names burnt at once all all in a row so like announcing the sub early announcing the sub late it was like announce the sub late then resubscribe which comes with an announcement an early announcement and then i think they did something with like the, the credit card or something to like cancel a transaction have it come up again so all that stuff we have to vet out. So I need to check to see whether or not, um, to check whether or not the name is, has been put on the board, the username has been put on the board within 25 days. That's our kind of like cutoff. And then there's a couple other things that it has to kind of like pass in order to be burnt up onto the board. So this is, this is my return, uh, this is my JSON log that we use quite, quite a bit here when stuff gets messed up. Pickle Licker was the example today. He announced his sub early, but he had also subbed within the last 25 days. And so the name wasn't put on the board, which is not very fair to Pickle Licker. He's being nice about it. He doesn't feel like, you know, me manually injecting the name into the board. Um, channel points have a unique transaction ID. Yeah, it's something like a UUID for a sub event. So for my, in my view, my, my own limited little bubble, um, if money exchanged hands, I would like a new UUID. I'm doing good, X of C. How are you? Um, so if I get a unique ID for each transaction that has occurred, that would, I could blow away like 60 lines of code. I don't know how many lines of code. It's like five to 10, maybe, maybe I'll say 50. We'll say 50 lines of code. I don't know how many lines of code it is. Um, but there's a bunch of lines of code that have to vet out whether or not the uh, the person's trying to cheat because <laughs> my users are smart. They figured out all these really good ways to cheat, which is great because I was able to vet this against them. Um, but it would really be nice if there was a an ID for that sub. And then if the user announces it later, early or whatever, if I've gotten that JSON return for that name, that has a unique ID associated with it. And it's, but I don't know if that would apply to, I don't know if that would apply to like, like financial cancellations and then re, re upping. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that is. Oh man, that's a tough one. Cause they could still cheat the system. It's a complicated problem. We had to, we had to really like, like come up with like, uh, like truth tables and stuff in order to figure out whether or not this thing would work. But <laughs> I'm working, uh, oh, oh, Navigator Nomad. We'll put you up on the board. I'm working on a remote control video overlay ah, for my rovers and MIDI controls and stuff. There's not really an easy answer to the documentation organization without adding 10 copies of all the info all over the place. And then stuff inevitably gets out of date even easier. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. The wonderful thing about JSON is they could just add that <laughs> to it and it wouldn't blow everybody's computers up. We do have UUIDs for transactions, obviously, but I think there's, yeah, I think it's internal. 
can find something if you want to synthesize synthesize the ask yeah i'm not sure uh it would be it would be really great if uh that was just part of the json return but it's not it is for channel points though individual channel point redemptions get a uuid i guess they just didn't bring it out into the subscriptions i don't know how other services do that <laughs> we kind of just had to come up with a with a methodology here yeah, let's put uh, Navigator Nomad up on the board. <laughs> I'm not surprised the API isn't consistent at all. Yeah, yeah, we learned that. We learned that one the fun way. Honestly, I have no idea. I, like, I'm not, I'm not a computer scientist. I don't work with this stuff a lot. I'm basically one of these jack of all trades engineers. I'm a big jacking engineer. I'm I jack a lot. I, jacking jack jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. Um, but yeah, so I had to kind of like learn Python and then also learn APIs, and I had chat helping me. So that's why I seem like an expert, but I'm actually very dumb at this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the other week I was like debugging a call forever it turned out for one specific call a return parameter had dash instead of underscore <laughs> like who did this yeah it's not it's like I don't know <laughs> just just <oof. laughs> yeah the names won't get any smaller um, that's based on the number of names on the board so you have like a tapering down effect of the per date of the names that are going up there navigator nomad welcome to the board by the way thank you so much for subbing where'd you go you went by big fat tits don't we all though um and, and hunt liba and amazonian walrus is over there bananas for hands that's a you might want to watch out for that one pokey's over there the great carmelino but you can never great carmelino is an all in caps and there's no way to say it unlike a like a like a uh what is it, a, a crier? What do you call that? The person at the fair who's like trying to bring people in. Anyway. All right. So anyway, that's okay. That's a stress point. It's just annoying that Pickle Licker was able to sub later on previously and then today announce early and was caught by our exceptions as somebody who was trying to cheat the system when he wasn't. Um, and the reason for that is because I have a certain number of like little rules, and this is the only one that has sort of that outlying possibility of failure. Which means next month he'll be able to go on the board, but it's it's like, I don't wanna, I want people to n not have, I don't wanna have to think about this, right? And I don't want you guys to have to think about this, but you do. You, you can't announce early apparently on this channel. It sucks. <sighs> But if I had like unique transaction ID for Pickle Liquor's previous and this one, then it should have worked. One of the month fields didn't tick up by one month because that would have been an exception that allowed it to leave, right? The cumulative months or, or any of the other ones. How many, how many cumi months did he have? I have to say it like that. Otherwise I'll say it really bad. Uh, scroll, scroll, scroll. There's Fadanon. Oh, uh, Plavatos. Dr. Plugger, here it is, eight months. So why didn't that count up and provide an exception? Maybe because it I'm using months and not cumulative months. I might need to look at cumulative months. <laughs> Just give give me a general unique ID, 42069. Yeah, there you go. There's this, there's this alphanumeric identifier. So it might be, it might also be an error in my software. Uh, it might not be checking the right field. That's something that maybe we need to look at. <laughs> Not now, though. We've got other stuff to do. We're building computers. We're building computers. I need to open up one of my other computer parts. And that would be the I.O. shield. So this is going to give me the height of the side panel. And uh, the other parameters that I'm going to need in order to design these panels. So what I'm thinking. What I'm thinking, Chad. What I'm thinking about here. Is I basically want this piece this T-shaped section right here. And I want to take that 
and I want to turn that into the thing that's going to give me uh, a means by which to hold up the grating. And we'll have to uh, ascertain the, uh, the thickness of the grating, and I'll basically split this and have a fastener that holds it together. I'll have to figure out how we want to do that precisely. <sighs> so much work to do on this thing, huh? What's that small block in the picture in front of the PCB? These, this is the capacitor block. I actually tweeted about this when I got it done. This is the capacitor block, and it is a very necessary piece of the uh, power supply. That power supply runs 300 volts DC, and then it has two local Panasonic thin film ca caps here. Whatever they are, they're like, they're like plastic capacitors. These things, you can sink your soldering iron into these things and totally destroy them. They're very compact with a lot of oofs in them. But um, they're very fragile. They're they're weird. They're a weird product. They're recommended that you have these when you can't fit the capacitor block near enough. So inside of that block is these two big capacitors, and those are on the power supply in order to stabilize the 300 volt DC. So they're there. They need to be these big chonking caps. I don't know if I could do multiple smaller caps or something of that nature, but. Either way, I didn't have room for them on this PCB. There's definitely not room for any capacitors in this area. So put it on a plug and made it remote. And then in order to not make it hideous, because uh, re remember this computer before was a bunch of parts that were thrown into uh, like the inside of this cage, a uh, similar cage. And so in order to be able to just throw this stuff together, I actually put, um, I potted, I potted the capacitors in rubber silicon rubber. It was a two-part silicon rubber, and uh, I used a little balsa wood cube in order to in order to make like a little bath for the thing, right? So, ah! but anyway, so in order to cover that up, I did it in the style of the rest of the stuff on this PC. So, just like the graphics card got this piece to hold on the front so it didn't rattle around, because there's no PCIe slot, it's on a cable, and the power supply hookup was made prettier by a little bit of 3D printing and some grading, so too the capacitors. It'd be kind of nice if I could do this that whole thing for the entire power supply, but I don't think that's going to be totally necessary. We still do need a voltage dam, like right there, so that that doesn't short out. That would be a disaster. I like the style you've gone with. It looks like a, like an 1800s like radiator cover, but it's purple. <laughs> I make this computer look like a. Well, ugh. okay, let's put that over there. So yeah, that's what that is. That's just capacitors, and those are entirely necessary in the rest of the computer. But what I'm trying to do now is get all this stuff together and cover cover the outside so there's no so there's no finger poking. The users can't get their fingers into my computer, hurt themselves. So what I want to do is I want to hold this thing up in here. Now I could use I could use the gap in the maker beam, and that's what I did previously, was I used the gap in the maker beam just to hold on to the grating. But I am done with that. <laughs> I don't want to do that again. I don't want to do that again, because it's it rattles around, and it's kind of loose, and, and it it's kind of weird having the lip around the whole computer. So what I want to do is I want to suspend this, and this camera's like way out of focus. Yeah, he is. All right, so I want to hold this stuff pretty much flush, but I don't think I'm going to accomplish flush. I think we're going to go like a millimeter down. Probably, well, two millimeters is kind of pushing it, isn't it? Going two millimeters down is pushing it. But I mean, we need one millimeter for the cap of the screw. So the screw cap would almost be sitting on the grating. But as long as, as, long as I can get like a screw in that thing in order to hold down the top, and I can, kind of, I can kind of take style cues from these things. So we'll just have a small... Eh, mm, A small border like this, small purple border like that, and then the grating will be inside of there. And the rest of it will be open. And then the, the edges will be chamfered. And hopefully this will provide something that will hold this grating in place. Green is a second color. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm not doing green. I don't have green fill. I have clear, I have translucent green fil filament. But I'm I'm stressing the oranges here. Well, I'm, I'm complimenting the oranges because I want to put a Nixie tube thing in it. But that's later. That's not going to come for a little while. 
but I need, I, I, I want to make this, like a case for this, for the Arduino and the Russian switching uh, chips and then the high voltage power supply. I would love to make a case for this that is in that style. So it would be, it would be kind of like this. And then this would bolt to the, just the bottom of the case in the front and be behind the mesh. And I wouldn't have these standoffs anymore. So it would just look like uh, science numbers sitting out there. And then I would love to hook that up to the current sensor over here so that I could display stuff. That would be really cool. But I'm not, I'm not going to do that yet. Not going to do that yet. I guess I could use an unused pin of the Arduino over there to... What are the Arduino pins doing over here? I think it's... um, One of them is one wire. One of them is the reset. One of them is the fan. One of them is current. So I have two pins that I'm not using over there. All right, I could do like a one wire uh, or something similar to communicate to the Nixie tube thing. Well, what? anyway, that's later. Orange is all, yeah, orange is the, it's, I mean, purple, blue, orange, like that, that family. Blue and orange, of course, has been done to death by movie posters by now, but that, you know, hey, whatever. So anyway, I am going to continue to use this purple filament as if I have something wrong with me. Um, and then we can do like, and I, I'm only pulling this thing up as like an example, because it would, it would just be that much material, this much material, and then the black grid from there. Yeah, I know. It's, the computer's going to look like the thermal image. It's true. It's true. I really want to get this done, though. Uh, <laughs> I really want to get this thing done. I'm getting close. We're getting close. I'm going to do a carbon fiber panel right here. I don't know if that'll be able to fit both of the buttons. Um, it's actually pretty tight because we only have this much height. And the buttons have... Where are the fasteners for the buttons? What happened to those? I'm trying to update you guys because I've been working on this thing for the past, you know, six days. Constantly. It's all I've been thinking about. I haven't eaten. I haven't slept. No, I've, I've eaten a lot. I haven't slept, though. Uh, let's see. Oh, here they are. Would be cooler with the aluminum profiles anodized in black. No. No, it wouldn't, actually. Because that's what I had previously. <laughs> the the old version of this computer was in black. And I didn't I didn't want the black on black. It, it, it was a good look. I mean it worked for, for a long time. But um I want I want a brighter I want a brighter computer. And also the silver complements. I mean the silver and the hex hexagonal pieces and stuff. Basically, I'm just going with the design department of EVGA. <laughs> but so these are the these are the 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 nuts that hold on the buttons and stacked up, they're the same height as the sidewall of my case. So either I do this and in order to put the buttons in, I have to turn the button in order to tighten it up which I guess is acceptable, or I need smaller buttons. But I like the buttons because I've already modified them to have orange LEDs in them, so. Tastes are different. <laughs> but mine is objectively better. We can, we, can, we can put that down to science. But yeah, small lip around the edge and then grating. So that's, that's the idea here. And it, I do have to kind of, uh, I got to give in a little bit on this one because this is like, <sighs> I, did, I wanted, I didn't want the loud purple filament to be part of the exterior surrounding everything. I could print it in black and then it would kind of blend in with the grating, but I think, I think I'll just do it in purple and see what happens, you know? Boy, I could make the base plate for the computer out of plastic like this. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> it would make, it would make... By the way, uh, printing printing stuff. That is some neat extrusion framing. It's called Maker Beam. Maker Beam. I had to cut some specific lengths in order to, to make this as small as possible. But they come in various sizes. They're tapped on the ends. They're good if you're like if you're building a lot of electronic stuff or if you need like to make a jig in order to make a good cut on something. You can wang together a bunch of these very, very easily. And they typically come in black. The black anodization is the typical Maker Beam. Um, but they're just an extrusion profile, and then you get these oddly shaped nuts. And it's not the only oddly shaped nut in my life, but these are ground on the edges so that, because I mean, grinding, grinding nuts, we're all familiar with this, 
but these are ground on the edges so that they fit into that profile and don't turn. So the, um, I think we, it's three millimeter at the middle of the channel. Maker beam, you can find the profile, by the way. There's also open beam. There's a couple other systems too that are, you know, maker beam's not cheap. The kit is like 75 bucks, I think. Um, but it, it's like, I don't know. It, it's got a professional look to it. I like the extrusion rail look on this computer. I'll probably do 20 millimeter for the water cool version and then try to put lights in it. <laughs> yeah, the 20 by 20 millimeter is like um, <laughs> Euro rail. I forget what it's called, uh, but the like open builds is a place in New Jersey that sells it. And so I just buy stuff from open builds and I'm like, I'm on their doorstep here in, here in Philly. So, um, but yeah, this is Maker Beam. It's a different system. I got these off of Amazon. Uh, they come in all kinds of different sizes. They're good for stuff like this. Burn the Subs is made out of Maker Beam. Um, my computer is made out of Maker Beam. But yeah, the open extrusions are good. 80-20 rail is also very good, but they have more, like, stuff. They have more parts, but they're also much more expensive. So yeah, pick your poison. Currently try a neat PLA filament with 80% copper. Huh. That stuff sucks heat a bunch, but I have a test print currently in a light acid bath what the hell are you up to it's got a nice bluish patina oh that's neat hope that works good i like that look yeah that copper blue is is a neat look so one of the by the way one of the things one of the things that i need to do on the base plate is i think i need a fan i think i need a fan on the base plate what i'll do is i'll take one of these fans i'm gonna put one of these fans underneath the motherboard near the m2 drive because I don't want my drives failing on me, and I feel like I need a little bit of active airflow under the computer. So I'll just have this as like a little under-computer exhaust fan. Under-motherboard under, under motherboard exhaust fan. So that'll be somewhere over here on the carbon fiber plate. I'm going to have to cut a vent hole for this thing, which is going to be really annoying. I think 20 by 20 is the smallest the professional profiles go. Yeah. Yeah, the, the 10 by 10 is for like Electronics stuff, toys. <laughs> That's what the Maker Beam uses. This fan is a little tall too. It's actually exactly 10 millimeter. So it's gonna stick down the height of the carbon fiber plate, which is fine because I'll have little rubber feeties on these, which will push the whole case up a little bit. And so that'll create an area for this thing to exhaust into. All right, anyway, so those are the, those are the plans that I've been working on. I got too many fires burning right now. We need to make something like this it's going to hold down the grid. Excuse me. Hold on. Whew. There we go. I'm back. Something like this that's going to hold down the grid in a slot. And then it'll have a screw hole in the corner. Possibly another screw on the other edge in order to screw into another piece of itself. In the opposite corner. Because I want to have a continuous line around the whole case. I wish I could just print this whole thing in one go. That'd be great, but... The price of Maker Beam is really expensive for my taste. Just get mine on eBay from a local seller. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta work around the thing. I use Maker Beam for enough stuff, and I've collected enough of it, that I'm doing okay with it. I don't know if I'd want to order another booster pack of this stuff, though. But what happens around here is I'll break down an old project or an old cutting jig... And then those parts will go back into the bin, and it's just, it's like Lego, you know? But uh, there's also Open Beam. There's, there's others that try to make it cheaper. So I'm, I'm just opening this up for measurements, basically, because I don't really remember exactly what we're doing here. We know it's 10 millimeters tall. We got 10 millimeters tall. Din rail is kind of fun to work with, but then you got to buy din rail stuff for everything. Din rail stuff is another automatic price increase just because it's din rail. <laughs> All right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So, what dimensions are we going to make these things? Yeah, din rail, not for structural. That's the, yeah. But for like electronics, like if you're making, I love making industrial din rail setups. They're so cool. Nice and neat and organized, too. I'm a psychopath with the, the level of organizing things that I like to do. I, I'd rather organize stuff in CAD, though. It's so much easier to do. That's why 3D printing these parts has been wonderful for this project. 
because I don't have to come up with some kind of like bracketry in order to hold this this grating on. I can print something and then it, it can be as, as, it can look as much like the interior of a McDonald's as I need it to. I'm a secret German. Oh no! My, technically, my dad did a bunch of genealogy and uh, my family is related to the Blauvelts, who are Dutch. And they're the people who owned New York before it became New York. Why they changed it, I can't say. People just like it better that way. This is going to be so close to the heatsink. I'm a little concerned about this area. I'm concerned about this thing getting close to the heatsink. I don't think it'll get that hot if the cooling is proper. I would have liked to have that little air gap there, but it looks like that's going to be taken up by the 3D print. And in fact, we don't have a lot of room between these two. So that's going to affect things quite badly, in fact, because I need these corners in order to mount the, the grating to. Substitute streamers continuing the gifts up from three mares. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. You guys should all go check out substitute streamers. Um, yeah, that's going to be weird, isn't it? I'm going to have to come up with something unique for this area. But this area over here... Here in Germany, there's no switching cabinet for fuse box without dinner rolls. I've seen them before. Yeah, they're very clean looking. You can get everything for dinner rails. They're nice. It's really nice to be able to like organize something with dinner rail. There we go. A little bit of a, a little bit more of a view of the project here. We got all the room that we need in, in the world over here. It's just over there. It's going to be very, rather difficult for me to get the grid on something this thin and have it be held together. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Dinner rails are love. Dinner rails are life. Yeah. <laughs> the my brewing project uses them and, and it's it's a wonderful thing to have to be able to open up that control cabinet and have so much hardware in there and have it organized all just beautifully organized all right so let's start with uh mm, what length i mean i guess i could do this thing is actually this one's a custom length it's all right so we're 300 by i think 340 yeah, I need to get a side measurement of this thing. I mean, if I if I design the whole thing in CAD as one big piece, I guess I can split it up also in CAD. Organization, what's that? Somebody named Dins. You should... Hmm. How do you cut these? Uh, carefully. I don't know. I have... I, I Technically, a chop saw would probably be the cleanest way to do it. My way of cutting it was to use a shitty bandsaw and then put it on the mill and clean up the end, which is really time consuming and it's not good. It's not a good method. It's just the way that I did it. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to think about how I can have these things meet up and be minimal. Be minimum mushroom man. I could cut this up and use it as a test piece over here. I need to figure out what this 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 rail is 300 millimeters. This one is cut. I need to figure out what that length is right now. So I mean, how do I know it's 300? Well, there it is, right there, 300 millimeter. Ah, 300. So that's 300. What do we got over here? This is more than 300, so I need to measure it piece by piece. So we'll just take it to there. It's 100. And, oh God, why is it a weird number? 150, what is that? One, two, three, four. Oh god. This is gonna be annoying. I'm gonna have to use the finger method. Yeah, a fine tooth blade on a on a chop saw. Or drop saw, yeah. I know where I keep my nails. I know where I keep my coffee table to nail people's heads to. That's all I need. Well, to each their own. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I mean, I could measure it in inches using the using the the mat. That is nearly exactly twenty five inches. Sorry, fifteen, sixteen, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fourteen inches. All 
Oh man, that's uh, th there's no way that I can measure this that it's going to be accurate enough. This is dumb. I shouldn't be <laughs> I shouldn't be doing it like this. <laughs> How am I going to do this? I need to measure it, but all my measuring stuff is too short. I can measure the difference between 300 millimeters and the end. How about that? I think that might do it. Man, Jacose, I'm getting a lot of mileage out of these rulers, man. <laughs> more than more than I think I ever expected to. So with some sense of accuracy, I can say this thing is 300 plus 61.83. So 362. Is that really true? True. Yeah, 362. Might be a little bit. No, that might be about it. Yeah, I guess I could get out the tape measure. Let's measure, let's measure the tape measure against that. 362 is the number. Let's see if that's what we get from the tape measure. I got a metric tape measure. I'll go grab it. It's across the room. I'm wondering if I need to just make the whole part and then split it up. It doesn't seem like the best method, but on that one end, it's gonna be very difficult. I mean, I can print the entire side spans. On my printer, it's going to be a little, a little weird, but yeah, I just have, I have, I have three hundred. I have, what is the little one? Three hundred one fifty on the flat rulers, because uh, Jacose got sick of me not being able to do anything around here. <laughs> he got me these flat metal rulers that are really nice, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just being memey because I don't love that stuff for personal projects, but can't justify... Sorry, I'd love to use that stuff for personal projects, but... Two, but I can't justify double and tripling of price for mostly stamped metal hardware? Yeah. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's... Whatever. It's a good look, though. It's got a good look. That nah, 360. One... And some change. Not a lot of change. Uh, some of you are probably straining your eyes in order to see this here. Let's come in here. I know not everybody has me on like a 1080p screen. 3-6. <laughs> now let's see. I'll try to get that as flat as possible. One and then somewhere in the two. So if I make it 362, that might not that might not work. Might not work. Of course, I should probably measure the other side as well. But we know that this span is 300, and 300 barely fits on my 310 millimeter uh, printer. Which actually, it's got to be more than 300. It's got to be 310. Damn it! <laughs> it has to be 310 because we need we need the 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 thing that goes over the edge. So it, it doesn't go five on either side though, so it's it's a little less than. But then the the support material is gonna. Ah oh, man, that's not gonna work. I can't three D print the entire lid. <laughs> All the other panels I can probably get away with. I mean, this one is the only other one that has that long of a span. And if I really wanted to, I could drop a post in the middle of it just to split it up, or I could split up the print into two pieces. And that won't be as noticeable, uh, assuming that it fits together. But all right, let's um, let's go ahead with trying to design the top piece. I'm gonna put my graphics card somewhere else. <laughs> I don't know where my graphics card is gonna fit in all of this. You know what? We'll just hoist it over here on my petard. You stay there and just survive. Please survive the build process. Ah! <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh man, I, it's like I don't have room for my arm to, to work CAD. Okay, so let's do a new one. New design, save it as uh, lid grid. All right. So I'm going to start a sketch. I'm going to start it 
right in the damn middle of everything. I'm going to create, here, let's get rid of this. Um, should we create the entirety of the whole thing and then I work with it from there, or do I need to, hmm, I need to do individual pieces and then work with it from there? Might have to lower the heat sink in order for it to work. Um, yeah, just thinking. You're doing all the CAD work wrong, so it doesn't, what are you talking about? Why is it? Why is it all wrong? You guys are so mean to me. Um, center rectangle. I'm just going to make the whole thing first, and we'll, we'll think about it as we go. So that would be 300 by 362. Probably have to make that a little bit smaller than that. In fact, 361... The other one should probably be like 299. Take the entire radius, and I guess I can go outward from there to make the thing. Well, no, I shouldn't do it that way. I'll do it as a box in the corner again. So we'll do a construction line box. And then that will be, what was it? It was like three millimeter. That's why we have the other files open, by the way, so I can get numbers from them. So I can measure it from here to here. Yeah, it was two millimeter. Okay. Probably should be a little deep. Well, it should be thicker than that, but I didn't make it very thick, so. You can split it and use five millimeter square by two millimeter a biscuit to join them. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I can, I can do, like, a split pin or something like that, yeah. And then I can just pin it all together. My, my issue is holding down the grid if I need to use additional fasteners on this thing. If I want to have, like, a screw in the midline, I'm going to have to bust it out a little bit to make room for that cap head. And then if I do that here, I don't think I can do that here. <laughs> I don't think I can do that here. But I would like to have a midpoint screw because the plastic is obviously, I mean, even just... Even just like this much of it, ah, this this might not be a good example. This much of it bends, so it's not really going to be that strong. <gasps> Excuse me. Cells interlinked. Okay, two by two. Oh my God, it's so small. All right, two by two on that corner, all the way. Oh God, this is a giant. This is one of the larger pieces that I've designed. Two by two. When I'm like splitting hairs with the small stuff. Actually, wait, that should not be a construction line. That should be a solid line, and I'm gonna need one in every corner. Every corner gets one because that's going to be the cutoff line for the uh the the inside rail stuff. Two by two. You joke, but that has literally been <laughs> reason for me to be late. Make it look like a 30-piece puzzle set. I was thinking of, like, it would be really cool to do a case like this, but it it's all held together. Like, it would look like, it would have kind of like a similar look as, like, the EVGA graphics card, except that these would be carbon fiber, you'd use silver fasteners on it, and then it would be, like, it would be, like, the Iron Man, like the like the suitcase Iron Man suit with all the flaps and stuff. So that when you turn your computer on, all the flaps like will open up and allow airflow. A what? Used AWS snowball at home that he got from somewhere? I don't know. What is that? I don't know what that is. <laughs> and chat will probably know better than I will. I guess I could just use lines. I was going to use a box. These lines. Uh, uh, uh. God, there's such a long distance to travel. Actually, I want this out here, this out here. Physical data migration. Weird. Yeah, I don't know anything about that kind of stuff. 
You guys think I know how computers work? Psh, psh. Okay, uh, let's two by two on the outside so the numbers look nice. It's a drive caddy. That seems neat. All the way down here. We go. We. Oh my god, this thing is huge. Okay, like that. Move the numbers so that they're not in the way. So from here, I'm going to figure out what that inner radius is. All the way down here. Or there. Did it? Did it not? Where's my... Oh, it's a... I, I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button, and now we have to... We have to go on another field trip. All right, here we go. Going all the way back. There was one time um, we were going to go to... my For my art class, we were going to go to the Guggenheim in New York City to see, uh, you know, what's good, what's going on in the Guggenheim. Take a look at some cool art, some cool modern art. You know, have a great time. Uh, just a little class thing. That'd be cool. It's just the art guys. Got it all together, scheduled it, organized it. I think it was on a Thursday. Um, got all the permission slips and everything. Teachers got us into a couple of vans. Drove out there. We got lunch on the way. This is like a two and a half hour drive to get to New York City from here. Get all the way to the museum. It's closed on Thursdays. They don't, that's their day. They're open all weekend. They're closed on Thursday. Or it was Tuesday. I forget what day, well, I forget what the day was. It's high school. And so we had to drive all the way back. <laughs> all the way back to Philadelphia. All the way back after going to the front of a museum, looking at it. Of course, after driving all that distance, you have to park the van, get out, and go all the way up to the door, and go, oh. <laughs> that was so funny. Two millimeters, all right. So that's two millimeter thick. So we'll do another two by two. Two by two. Do, 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 do. This is going to be where all the action happens over in this corner. Research and planning is hard. Yeah, you know, when you got an art department to run. Another one of these. Two by two. Two, two. Cutting corners. Not what I'm doing. Box. X. This. Zoom out. Way out. God, I'm dealing with millimeter dimensions on a on a centimeter project. Okay, there. I'm sure other people are more familiar with. I mean, this is like the basic of it, is what I'm trying to do. Your lockdown ends in your area at midnight? I gave it, I gave it two weeks before I was confident uh, going out and stuff. All right, that's all we need out of this sketch for now. And now I can extrude some shapes out of the thing. So I know that this has to be 10 millimeter. We'll just go ahead and do that. Hey, give me my sketch back. Then we're going to extrude this and this. Now, the way I did this previously was to do it from, like, do it in both directions from the, the plane so that it went up and down. I don't want to do that with this. I think it'll just be better if I just split the numbers up. So that lip, uh, it fits a little loosely. It fits a little loosely. I made it I think three millimeters. It printed at 2.44. But I'll just do a little inspect a doodle right here. Yeah, two millimeters becomes 2.44 in my printer because of the, the terrible support material. <sighs> the inability to bridge is something that affects my printer. Some people have it dialed in so nicely. I've seen printers lay down a line in free space that was just locked in. Beautiful line. I can't quite do that with the PETG setup that I have. I don't have a fan on it, um, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with. I don't. I don't need it to be like that. But uh, I've seen people have better bridging. Two point four four point four is fine. Um, and since we're managing where the support structure is, I guess we can get away with it. Um, I it, it, that that becomes a little bit more difficult if I want to print one entire side of this at once because the support structure will need to go outside of this two millimeter lip 
and my printer is 310 by 300 or something like that. It's like 300 by 310. And so I've got, I've got a, a, a sheet, a metal sheet on top of that that's even smaller. So I get a good bridge on 100 millimeters most of the time. Yeah, I, so yeah, you guys, you guys, everybody, everybody and their dog has been dialed in since they were born. And there's no reason why mine shouldn't be, but it's because I'm a terrible person. But whatever, I'm not going to let that bother me. So I'm going to extrude these things and we'll make them four millimeter tall and then a two millimeter extrusion, which will put it right in the middle. So I'm going to offset by four millimeter, four, and then we go up two. And then we zoom in for an hour. Come on! Oh, my scroll wheel finger is going to fall off. Yeah. So generally, I mean, you're not supposed to treat your 3D printer as if it's a replicator, right? It can't do perfect stuff. we got to keep it in mind uh, while we put together these parts. But uh, with the support material, I get pretty good luck on this, and it's not visible. As long as I have what I want generally with these prints, what I'm trying to do is keep stuff that was on the bed out of view. Keep stuff that was supported out of view. Keep stuff that's on the bed out of view. What I want you to be looking at is this lattice... Well, actually, this one's a violation of, that, of those rules. This right here is a violation of those rules. What I generally want is the top layer to be the thing that's, you know, most prominently visible. Because that, I mean, there's the, the back and forth motion and stuff like that is kind of the, the cooler looking part of it. The stuff that's on the bed is kind of like has a weird finish to it because of the glue. So. <laughs> I don't know how you aren't sponsored. I want to buy a 3D printer watching your streams. We are, we're small peanuts here. We're small peanuts. That's peanuts, peanuts. Sorry, I said that a little wrong. Um, I've got 85 viewers right now. It's not a lot of people for this kind of content, unfortunately. YouTube, YouTube has like thousands and thousands of viewers. I can rile you guys up and get you guys to chat a lot. Uh, that might help me get, that might help me get a, uh, you know, a bit of a better sponsorship. But like, I give, I give places my numbers and they're like, oh, <laughs> that's all I get. That's all I get. So there, I mean, people have approached me in the past saying like, yeah, you're, you're going to explode what you've done with all the camera work and your content and how you treat it and how entertaining you are. And I'm like, thank you. My ego enjoys that. And then they're like, they're like, here's a contract where we fuck you. And I'm like, I mean, I like fucking, but not like this. <laughs> like, like, the contract is just like, uh, the last line was like, and you get fucked. I'm like, can we rewrite that? Like, does it, do, does that have to be in there? No, but I mean, like, the, that was only one time. And I think it was, uh, these dudes were trying to, like, start out a thing where they sign you on for, like, a couple years of, like, advertising sponsors. And some of the stuff that they were going to get me to try to sell was something that I was going to take an engineering perspective into and, like, do RF testing on and stuff. Blue AU, thank you for the 200 biddies. I was going to take into... I'm not going to name anything specific because I, I don't want to be like that. But um, some of the products were a little dodgy. <laughs> In fact, most of the products were a little dodgy. Um, and I just don't know if I could have, I in good faith been like, mm, I love this product. You guys should definitely get it. <laughs> it was a flashlight. No, if I was doing that on Twitch, hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> you imagine how quickly my channel would get pulled? It'd be good. It'd be good PR, actually. Getting your channel pulled is a... I don't know. It works out pretty well for, for some streamers. All right, so in, in here, we want the grid. In here, we want the grid. Any publicity in a storm? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Now, if it can't go on my Discord, I don't want to do it here. I'm pretty militant about keeping the filth out of my Discord. Um. All right, so how do we hold this thing down? Because, like, this will give us a purple border around the whole computer.
My 3D printer is a modded Tronsky X5. We did a lot of we did a lot of 3D printing uh, improvements back in the day, and so what I ended up with was a Creality CR10S. I bought it because I'd be able to just wang it together and then show you guys and oh 3D printing, look at me. I hated 3D printing, and I still kind of do. Um, but I I had modified it and and modified it at the time and then over time um, to improve the wattage of the heaters and then to create kind of like, not modularity, but be able to like unplug sections of the printer for like moving it around and stuff. Now the printer lives where my belt sander did. Um, and so it's on a little wheelie cart. So it's much more manageable on the wheelie cart. But yeah, it's gone through, it's gone through quite a few revisions. Guys, I'm gonna stand up because I've been sitting for a little while. My foot is falling asleep. And get a little seltzer water. You guys should do yourselves a favor and not get blood clots in your brain. Keep the blood clots out of the brain. Everywhere else, uh, I'm indifferent to. <clears throat> do I have a glass that I can use that didn't have alcohol in it? Yes, I think this one. Morning coffee glass. Building a CR10 using 12 millimeter rails. That's cool. Yeah, getting so PETG was part of the part of what saved 3D printing for me. Because 3D printing, I mean, from my experience, you would spend all this time, you do all this tuning, you get everything up and running, and then you print something that's just functionally useless. Um, I am very much in the camp of people who do functional prints. All of my prints are not... I mean, I did one, I did the Rosinante. That's the only, like, decorative thing that I've done on the printer. And from my perspective, it seemed like all of these nerds were just getting 3D printers and getting them running so that they could print statues. Like I don't, I don't want anime statues all over the place. You know, I'm not like that. So in my mind, 3D printing didn't have much of a place. And then I was, I was forced by a very generous user. This is Wexo uh, was sending me just like a bunch of stuff. And what he did is he he actually sent me a direct drive hot end, and then he sent me some PETG. And the thing about PETG is this shit loves high temperature. It loves it. It will bask in heat. So when you amp up all of your all the power on the printer and you get it together to print this stuff, it makes strong stuff. Like this is very well bonded together. I didn't even use a cooling fan on this. This was the bed goes up to a high temperature, then it bumps down 10 degrees after the first couple layers. But the bonding on the individual layers of this thing, like you can make, you could run this over with a truck and it would mostly survive. Especially this part here where there's like the, the internal support structure and everything. It is strong. This is only two millimeters thick. And it's, it, it really holds together. So that's what kind of turned it over for me into something that's functional. I have a friend who's uh, in his Tacoma. He's got radio brackets that are, that are printed in PETG. <laughs> Yeah, 70% infill PETG with five balls. This is a 20% infill, which is criminally low. Some people claim, you know, you can make drinking glasses out of this stuff, and it's technically kind of sterile at first. I'm not going to do that, but I might build a water cooling part out of this still, if I can get it right. So far, it has not gotten right. But yeah, anyway, I love this stuff. I think it's, I think it's a great material, PETG, and you can get it in all kinds of loud colors, too. All right. But yeah, I, I don't know. The stuff that I advocate on this show is not because I'm being paid to. <laughs> you, guys, you guys should know that. I will sing the praise of things I like, but only exclusively things I like. If you guys see me talking about weird shit and being super positive towards it, and, you know, I, I get a gold chain around my neck and shit like that, you'll know I've sold out. Okay, so... The grating, what is our average thickness on the grating here? Because we got to support this grating within that two millimeter. Um, and then I'll, I'll have to build up corners or sections of it where I can bust out like a, like a little um, plate pad thing. I don't, I don't know. You guys know what I, you guys know what I mean. You know what I mean. You guys are smart. Um, I don't know if I want to do this extrusion now. The the extrusion of what this stuff is. 
I mean, I guess I can. Yeah, let's, all right, let's do it now, and that'll split this, and then that's going to make, well, that's going to make building everything else up a little different, though. <laughs> when a robot hands me my tools. <laughs> I'd have to get a friend of mine in to do that, where they could just, um, have, like, those grabby hands things. It might need to be more than... This is concerning me because this is the height of the stuff and then this fits in there a little too easily. I don't want to have to recut this, but I might. I might have to. Now, it's a good thing I have a lot of this material. But, uh, yeah, so this is, this is like just the right size for one of these fan panels. That's what that is. But that actually goes almost up to the edge, but not quite within the two millimeters. So, yeah, I'd have to recut this piece. Darn it. That's okay. This stuff is easy to cut, so... Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking for the fan panel. And if we can, if we can figure out the design of this, this is going to be the outward part of the computer. So let's, uh, let's pop a chamfer on this thing. But first I need a guide. I need something that is a screw size. So over here, and I think probably centered on the corner. So I'm going to review the sketch. I'm going to not view the body. I'm going to put a four millimeter circle here. Four millimeters is the width of the, the, the pan head, the pan head screw. Now, carbon fiber plate is being held down by silver screws. I should, do you think I should use silver screws with this? Because, I mean, the pan heads are the look of the rest of the case, whereas the carbon fiber is just the bottom plate of the case, which is not all that visible. It's not incredibly visible. I should probably do these. Spot? Well, uh, the robot dog? Is that what that is? The spot? There's the open source uh, robot dog project, too. But that open motor controller was a little cryptic. I didn't like using it. Do we keep the pan heads on this? I think I keep the pan heads on this. Even though it doesn't go along with sort of my outer case look. It'll go with... The look of the rest of the place so it's unfortunate that this kind of becomes a footnote the carbon fiber panel because that panel is really cool it's from okay now it's on the ground it's uh it's from hobby king and it's it's like a matte carbon fiber it's a really nice material i like it a lot i like it a lot all right uh four four millimeter circles so let's oh we need to edit the sketch so go back to editing the sketch crediting with editing it uh let's see non-construction line four millimeter then oh well bop 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 that doesn't work we're gonna have to go in four four millimeter we're gonna have to go further in than that so i think on the on the capacitor block it was six by six which is a lot <laughs> it's actually quite a bit it doesn't look like a lot from up here though Can you get those extrusions in any material? No, uh, they're aluminum. Uh, I think that's the only material. It is an open source project, I think. No, Open Builds is open source. I don't know what Maker Beam is. But yeah, you can't get them in any material. They're mostly aluminum. I don't know if you can get them in plastic. All right, we'll, we'll go with six by six, but I can alter that later. So in there, and by experience, because you know, We've done this a little bit on this thing. Basically, we are... Uh, why is... Why is orthonographic always the view, right? Why... What about this? That doesn't look like a real thing. It looks like I ran it over with a car. Why? Ortho's only good for straight on... It's perspective. There we go. Now it looks like an actual object. There's steel profiles? Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah, you can print your own plastic ones, too, but I don't know how a 3D print would hold up as... Because, I mean, that, that profile is kind of a special thing because it, it does actually, like, buckle a little bit. At least on the big stuff. <clears throat> yeah, would it, maybe, maybe the larger size, yeah. So anyway, I've designed this stuff already, right? And so we've got boilerplate numbers that we can apply to these things. Obviously, this amount of lip on the side is not something that we're going to do, but 
Could I ask a question? No, we're not allowing questions at this. Yeah, of course you can ask a question. Ask, ask away, man. I'm happy to. I'm happy to answer questions when I'm not in a in an awful mood. <laughs> can you get them in carbon fiber? Wait, you can get them in carbon fiber. Man, that's yeah. Carbon fiber is a great way to just multiply the price of your project. So yeah, I think um, we have numbers, and I'm gonna work within those a little bit. I might want to move those screws a little closer because they they don't quite. They're, they're a little far away, but as long as I keep it... Hold on. Which... Oh my god! Okay, that's from Delaware. I'm not gonna pick up. I have... My phone is technically a Delaware exchange. Oh my god, it just buzzed at me like four times. Why are you like this? Jeez, phone's all weird. Okay. I want wicker. <laughs> Not the bees! Um, all right, so what were we doing? Lid grid. That's what it was. So six by six is pretty far in there. I think I want it to be a little closer. Two by two was unacceptable. If we do four by four, what's that going to look like? I kind of want... I don't want the purple to be too prominent in the, the outer expanse of this thing. Three by three. We'll do three by three. Of course, that puts the bolt way up in the corner like that, but I think that's okay. We're worried about the corners first, so let's just see what we get. So three by three, and then four millimeter. Now, because we know all these numbers, what I can do is I can drop a four millimeter circle. I can drop a 1.8 millimeter circle. That's going to be a very tight fit. And then I can drop a 2.4, which will be a loose fit for the top layer. So it gets a little busy in there. I mean, we could we could just use we could just use fusion to drop a fastener in there, and then we give it the parameters of the fastener. But this is just how I'm doing it. <laughs> There's a thousand ways to go about the same task in this software. I'm doing it by individual circles. That way, I can gap the top layer and. But I could drop a fastener on it, and then it'll cut its its own little fastener hole, and then I could use a push pull in order to widen the top piece. But that's true. I could have gotten an extension on my car warranty. There was probably an error in my banking. That's probably what happened there. One point eight. Two point six. Also, these numbers. These numbers are also uh, ingrained in the way that I build stuff because I've done this a lot with my 3D printer. And having done this a lot with my 3D printer, I know what it can and can't do or what I'm going to get on the other end. This comes from, this is experiential stuff. I mean, I know there's this standard where it's like 0.2 extra for it to slide together and not fasten, 0.2 less for it to, you know, friction fit. Or something like that. There's there's standards for this sort of thing, and it seems that I'm following them. But for the most part, the way that I know these numbers is because I've done this. I've printed this before. I have printed these sorts of things, and I know how they work. So yeah, that's what that's what it comes from. That's what these numbers come from. I bought a CPU cooler without measuring it. Oh, and it's seven millimeter too big for my case. What could I put between the glass and case to close it all up? What kind of case are we talking about? Yeah, everybody everybody has uh, suggestions, it seems. Seven millimeters, man. That's pretty big. That's pretty big. It would be cool if the glass... See, on these, on these computers with glass sides, they typically have, like, clips and stuff on them, right? They don't have, like, uh, like something you could put standoffs on. Yeah, what kind, of, what kind of case is it? That's an important... I would like to know what kind of case it is, and then we can think of stuff. Yeah, that, it, it all depends. Because, like, on my NXZT case, the glass has little, like, um, like balls that just kind of, like, clip. They just kind of grip in or whatever. And then the other side of it has, I think it's, like, like, a clip that fits in. So, tempered glass with metal standoffs. Okay, let's take a look at this case. Colink Observatory. Google Images. 
That's a cool case. I like that. Ooh, look at all these pixels in this image. My God. Oh boy. So yeah, it looks like it hinges on the front and then there's screws on the back that hold it down. But you need to get seven millimeter extra out of that. That's tough. All right, I take it those, what, man, I need to hire, I, I need to hire res. It looks like, I mean, those standoffs, if those are standoffs, you might be able to just like extend them a little bit. Oop. There it is without the window. And it looks like those are just screw-in standoffs. This is a lot easier than I thought it would be. McMaster. And wait, let's go back to that. That was a, the manual. That's their listing on the case. Uh, manual. Manuel, tell me, what are these screws that I see? Yeah, whenever you're ready. I guess it's getting this from fucking the center of the earth. They need to they need to dig it out of the filing cabinet. You son of a bitch! <laughs> Reload. Okay. What is the mechanism by which you are holding on the side glass? It comes with a cable tie. Perfect. Uh, bap, 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 bap. This isn't glass. What is this? What is this crap? It's not even the right case. You fool. You fool. What is this? Um, all right. So if those are standoffs, I'm trying to get a size on those things. You might need to, you might need to bust out the calipers and actually like measure. Drive screw, SSD, motherboard standoff, side standoff. What is that for? PSU screw, add on car, thumb screw, fan screw, cable tie. Now I'm wondering. This stuff. Why do they call it a MIDI? That's not MIDI. Um, yeah, whatever size those threads are, you're basically... Oop, hold on. You're basically just going to McMaster. I'm going to McMaster because I know that everything's going to be there. Spacers and standoff. Might be jerking off. What is that guy up to? Good to see you, man. Thanks for subbing. With a prime. What are these, instructions? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're advising somebody. Hey, Ducard, how's it going? What up, cuz? This stuff I can understand. I don't know, when we get into what I'm actually working on instead of somebody else's, uh, some advice to somebody else's normal computer. My computer is not normal. My computer's insane. We'll get to that in a second. First, we gotta put might be jerking off on the board. I don't know what that guy's doing, but I suspect. I have my suspicions. Oh, why did that make a scrapey noise instead of a slidey noise? Oh, it's because the camera's uh, like 180 degrees out of... Okay, let's just turn that around. Turn that around, get the camera running in the right spot here. Okay. Jeez. That was annoying. Alright, so... I'm guessing might be is going to be all the way on the long side of the board, so we're going to be here for a little while. We're still traveling. Gotta make a whole thing about it, don't you? There it is. Right by Thor's lost kitten. Yeah, I know. It'll, but he doesn't have much choice. If he really wants to have that side of the computer on there, he could just, just throw some standoffs on it. You could come back later and three D print like a like an air dam if you really are that. Uh, Oh, that crazy about, you know, managing your airflow perfectly. Might be jerking off! You're by Oh Jizzles! Great. Just, what a great so spot to be in. And by the Anime Fuhrer and the Sink Pissing Champion. Jeez. What an area of the board. All right, so yeah, the user the user's asking, you know, how... Oh, bother, how can I do this? How the hell can I can I fit my... CPU cooler that's seven millimeters busting out the side of this thing. So the only thing that I can really come up with is you just hop on McMaster, you figure out what the thread spacing is, and you can buy just like a shitty standoff that's in the right size. 
that you could just put in line with everything else, right? And that'll hold it up. Only that whole panel will then be sticking seven millimeters. It's almost a centimeter sticking out of your case by a little bit. And so there's all this open air coming from all sides of it. And if you really are a complete maniac, you could do something with thinking sound deadening foam. Yeah, you could do something like that. Yeah, that would work. I mean, you could use foam, you could use poster board, you could use spray foam and a bunch of uh, tape. <laughs> you could use electrical tape if you're a maniac. I don't know. There's all kinds of ways that you could come up with something for that. Um, that's the fun part. <laughs> you could 3D print something. Although it's a fairly boring thing to 3D print, but you could make this big gasket out of 3D print material. <laughs> yeah, cat hair. Cat hair and epoxy. There you go. Happy to get those standoffs, but I'd like to close it up. Yeah, well, you got seven millimeters to deal with, man. And since it's a glass panel, it's not like you can just cut a, cut a square for the cooler. <sighs> Little fluffy cloud, thank you so much for subbing. Little fluffy cloud says, uh, since BTS is warmed up. Hell yeah. And Grumpix Gamer, thank you for following. Any other follows that I missed that I apologize for. I mean, look, you're gonna you're gonna have you're gonna have to bust out the side of the panel. Right? I wish I could build a PC, but parts in Australia are ridiculous. Yeah, man, what is that like? I see, I don't know. Around here, I can just I can literally just like 10 minutes from here, there's a there's a micro center. So I've got like everything I've got all the computing world at my fingertips, and everything has internet pricing there, which is insane. I've, that's why I'm such a freaking computer nerd. <laughs> this is, this is my own, my own design computer, by the way. We've, we've made quite a few parts for this thing. But yeah, anyway, let me just, uh, Grump, Grumpix Gamer, um, space standoffs are the easiest way that you can do it. You can just push out that entire side of the case because it's on four big fasteners. You can just push it out. And then from there, you can figure out what kind of a cursed gasket you make in order to bridge that gap. I would make it out of something that's very fluorescently colored because uh, this case takes itself way too seriously and it really should look like, I mean, it should be like rainbow. You could even, you could even, <laughs> um, hold on. Extrusion, uh, what is it? LED rail. You get like, uh, these are a little expensive, but you could get stuff like this that's gonna fit that 10 millimeters and you could put LED strips in it. <laughs> and then you'd have, you'd have this, like it would hurt your eyes to look at the side of the case. But if you're, if you're bumping it out like seven millimeter, just go for the, go for the hat trick and go for 10. And then you can do, you do like this stuff. <laughs> or you could, you could get some maker beam maybe, I don't know, but yeah. Everything in Australia is nutty expensive. Like even games have the, the huge surcharge on them. But what we've been doing is working on my own computer. This is of my own design. And we've got cool parts like this that I've created in AutoCAD in Fusion 360 and then printed on the 3D printer in order to hold all of the, all the meat of my computer together. Now the computer itself is built out of Maker Beam, which is a 10 millimeter by 10 millimeter extrusion rail. And in previous iterations, I've used steel speaker grill as the paneling. And so this is the look of the previous edition of the computer and it was all open air. So it's like, it's basically just a bunch of like open grating. Instead of doing that on this one, I am using the clear anodized rails. Hold on, I gotta put this down so it doesn't, no, oh, it flopped over, God damn it. And then I am putting this carbon fiber panel as the base plate. So the bottom of the computer is gonna be this carbon fiber panel. It's gonna be an absolute nightmare for me to machine some of the structures on this. One of the things that we could have done today is cover this in blue tape and then start marking out where all the hardware goes. But in order to fit everything on this, I am using a carbon fiber base plate. I have hex grid grading. My custom power supply, which produces basically five to 600 watts of 12 volts. And then the motherboard has a car, like a car computer adapter that turns that 12 volts into all the different computer voltages. I've had to make a custom back plate for the graphics card, which this isn't the final edition of it. The final edition is the one that's already installed. 
custom backplate for the graphics card, and then I've got to do custom cooling for the uh, for the heat sink of this thing. The hex grill looks way better. Um, blah, 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 blah. It matches it matches the design of this thing. I think that's where I'm uh, um, I am on that. I do like the speaker grill because it was more of like an industrial look. What I don't like is that this carbon, this thirty-five dollar carbon fiber panel, is all the way at the bottom of this thing, and I can't see it. <laughs> but yeah, I've been designing parts for this. This is a capacitor block that's required for the power supply. It's a weird thing, hard to explain to people. But the idea is, and it looks like it looks like an old like an old apartment radiator cover. <laughs> but I'm using this small uh, plastic sheet with the grill in it and just doing the black screws on purple with black grating look for the whole thing. So that's that's what we're doing here. It's weird because I do, like, uh, my channel's weird, guys. My channel's really fucked up. I say I'm working on a computer and then we end up, like, re-soldering a uh, circuit board. <laughs> Reminds me of the GameCube. Yeah, maybe it's a little bit in that vein. I gotta, like, put these panels up somewhere. They're not gonna get in the way. There we go. <laughs> it is. It's really messed up. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like, hey, let's uh, let's let's play a game, and then the game I end up playing is like is like building something. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's like so weird. <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's that's the project that we're working on. I figure it was a good time to remind everybody of what we're doing. So I am trying to figure out how to mount the hexagonal grating panel to the entire computer, basically the entire lid of the computer. So we've decided on three by three millimeter and then the four millimeter wide cap heads that get a one millimeter thing. And I would like to frame it with only one millimeter of material, but that might not, I might need more than that in order to hold down that grating and not have it uneven and stuff. Uh, I don't know. We'll try for it. Let's just see. So three by three on the corners. Although, God, it's so it's such a long distance to go. There we go. Was it? Oh no, it was from this. So three by three, and then we need a four millimeter. Actually, whenever I see. Hold on, uh, 2.6 and then 1.8. Whenever I see my cousin in chat, I should probably wonder why he's awake because he's in Australia and it's very early in the morning there. Like very, very early in the morning. <laughs> I think he's on the, is he on the East Coast? I forget. You guys wouldn't know. Three by three. Well, wait a minute. Did that? Uh, I, hmm? Three. Three. Well, that was a weird number. Oh, you guys are in locked. In. Ugh. 5 a.m. here in AU. Oh, man. You guys are locked down. Yeah, I, I did grocery shopping without a mask the other day. Because uh, we're, we're unlocking down and I'm all vaccinated and stuff. I got to get my vaccination with a bunch of old people moderately early because of diabetes. Two point, even though they, they specified type two, not type one. They specifically said type two, and I'm like, uh, I'm going to count type one just because maybe they don't know it exists. <laughs> okay, so circles interlinked. Circles upon circles interlinked cells. Uh, let's see. Man, that was a good movie. I should watch that movie. So, <laughs> I got mine early because of Fat and Depressive. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah, technically I counted for BMI like twice over. <laughs> I don't know. I got to lose weight, man. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I got to get on that exercise bike. That's basically it. The only way, like, diet is not going to do it for me. I, if, I start, if I start working out, I will thin out within the course of a year again. Before I was doing, before I was doing uh, uh, like an exercise routine with a friend, but everybody got busy, and then we got COVID. We didn't get COVID. He didn't get COVID either. But I mean, you you know what I mean. All right. Um. 
I would love for this. <laughs> I got mine sort of early because they told me I could. So we're not going to be able to make the entire uh, spans of this on the printer. My printer is like the same dimensions as this would be. It would be awesome if we could print this all out in one go, but I'm the same. I'll do it if you do. Do what? Oh, work out? Yeah, I, I gotta start. I mean, the my my <laughs> I lost a ton of weight back in the day because I made a video for Hack a Day. And I was like, if I'm gonna be on the other side of the camera, I need to be fit. As if like that was my only I have the shallowest motivations of anybody that I know, right? I wanna look good because I'm on camera. That's it. The health, feeling good about myself, being able to move my body around without being exhausted. No, that all that stuff is second seat to uh looking good on camera. How shallow are streamers, you ask? <laughs> yeah, for Hackaday, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, but anyway, anyway, um, I, I lost a shit ton of weight then for that, uh, and part of it was actually getting back on testosterone too, but then there was an ADA recommendation about not getting on testosterone if your red blood cell count was over a certain level, I think there's one other person in chat who, who this is the exact same story that they have that happened to me. And so off of testosterone, no longer building muscle. I stopped going to the gym. We had COVID and, you know, that cascade. So I'm, I'm starting to undo it a little bit. Um, I got an exercise bike on a stand. I'm going to get started on that. Okay. So anyway, what I was talking about is I'm not going to be able to print this on the 3D printer. This is too big. Too big. This is straight up too big. So I can have interlocking sections of this that will go together and hopefully look seamless. And the way that I think I'm going to accomplish that is that around here, I'm going to put a uh, like a, a screw down on that. Is testosterone legal in the USA? Yeah, I mean, if, if basically I don't make a lot of it. So I'm like borderline. And so I can qualify for getting it externally. And that makes me like a normal boy. And then I can work out and end up having a normal body weight suddenly and all the doctors go wow this is crazy and i'm like what the fuck do you think what do you, what do you where'd you get that license to be a doctor like of course it had a big effect fuck it's like i can wake up in the morning i feel alert and in the moment and i can motivate myself to go to the gym it has such a holistic like a... <laughs> it just it pisses me off um but yeah that's that's me though I'm not holding back on health stuff. Apparently, I'm, I'm venting to chat today about health crap. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's legal. It's about as legal as, as Gamer Girl bathwater, but you need a prescription in order to get it. And then insurance doesn't cover it. So it was like 80 bucks a bottle. Uh, that was fun. 80 bucks is not that bad, to be honest. But th then for some reason, everybody... Everybody said, nah, we don't do that anymore. We can't give that to diabetics. I'm like, the fuck? Like it had such a it had such a change to like every part of my equilibrium in terms of like, you know, you get fit, you don't need as much insulin, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Blind via rated with a party of nine. Hey, that's a good number, man. What are you guys working on over there in blind via land? Over here we're building a computer. I'm building my computer. We've been working on this for like Two weeks now, because the LAN party was canceled, and I can actually do the mods that I want to do and give this thing, like, a cohesive look. So what we're trying to do right now is figure out how to hoist this grating, this hexagonal grating that I have, on the rails without it getting in the way and without it getting on stuff that's going to get hot. So that's, that's what we're doing right now. Electronics layout review for, PC, for PCB designs given to me. Oh, that's fun. That's fun stuff. <laughs> be a bit tedious, but with PCB design, if you can if you can get yourself by all the boring stuff, it's a lot of fun. I love that kind of stuff. When you're adipose, your testosterone levels drop massively. That's what I felt. But you can recover when you reduce the weight. Yeah, uh, part of it was breaking the cycle, breaking the cycle of higher higher basal rates. So the basal rate is the constant amount of insulin you get throughout the day in order to keep your... What are you going to use this PC for? Masturbating. Um, the basal rate of insulin is what you get throughout the day in order to keep your glucose levels like in range when you're not eating. Because when you're not eating, 
uh, various factors play into it and they raise your glucose level slowly over time. Um, and so the basal rate keeps that normal. But when you grow, <laughs> when you have a lot of weight on you, the insulin is less effective. And so you have a higher basal rate. But that higher basal rate, insulin is growth hormone, and so you gain weight. And so that cascades and it keeps happening over and over again. You get fatter and fatter and fatter and it's terrible, right? Part of why it's so hard to lose weight. Um, you can grow some basil to help you. Anyway, um, yeah, it's a vicious circle. Um, I took a drug called Jardiance, which blocks sugar and, f and salt, like in your kidneys by some mechanism. And that also broke the cycle. And all of a sudden I lost like 30, 40 pounds, like quickly. It was nuts. Um, that, that's kind of gone away now. So I don't get away with as much, um, but my glucose levels are in great control now. I need to actually just, you know, get on that bike, get that little bit of exercise, that the, the little bit of additional exercise that I need to get. I, <laughs> you know, fucking, yeah, meanwhile, you need to gain weight. You got the skinny jeans, and I wish I got the skinny jeans. I actually don't wish I got the skinny jeans, because I wouldn't fit in the skinny jeans. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gaining weight is, is a bitch in and of itself, too, though. That's a tough thing to do. All right, so we're done with the sketch uh, for now. What I'm thinking is that, Oh, no, we're not done with the sketch. God damn it. What I'm thinking is in the in the center here, I am going to put up um, just like a little block with uh, filleted edges. So it'll be block with filleted edges and I think two fasteners. And we can try to finagle those fasteners into place so that they hold the two different spans of this stuff. And then that'll be that'll make it the size that my printer could do. I could go with losing a person. Yeah, same here. But the thing is, though, is, as giant, horrible fat asses, we have excellent calf muscles. Because <laughs> we're always doing squats. I already do all the squats. All right, um, so what size do we think that needs to be? My doc put me on a diet. I've lost six kilograms in 21 days. Shit, dude. <gasps> That's crazy. So we need whatever distance from this up a little bit. I actually think that I need to drop a construction line on this, and that way I can have it driven by all these, all this, this mess of numbers up here. That way if I want to tweak it, I can come back to this, this sketch, and I can tweak that number, and it won't blow up my entire drawing. You gotta remember, in Fusion 360, we're working on a timeline. We're working on a timeline. Everything that we do to this drawing, everything that we do to our device, is on a timeline, this happens, then this happens, then this happens. So if you blow up a number early in your timeline, it can mess up everything else. You gotta be cognizant of that. Feel a friend of mine have that binge eating disorder? Huh, no therapy helped. She got Omega Loop. Literally has no stomach anymore. Holy shit. So many problems even... Ugh. Happened after the correctional operation. She's so thin now, I need so much supplement. Damn, dude. Yeah, wait, you said she died. She got better, I guess. That's nuts. Um, yeah, when I when I went into the hospital for that DKA a while back, that was caused by the Jardians. Uh, when I went to the hospital for that DKA, they they did a CT scan and they were like, your stomach <laughs> nearly. Yeah, nearly, okay. They did a CT scan of my stomach and they were like, your stomach is twice the size it should be. I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do about that? Like, what do you want? <laughs> wonder how much work you actually do per hour versus going off on a tangent due to chat that's a tough one because i mean this show is entertainment it's not it's not purely engineering right <laughs> 15 minutes of work four hour stream i work a lot slower with you guys here but that's that's what we signed up for distance from here to here three millimeter i should have i should have i should have i should i should have known i should have known that didn't know that was three millimeters. So if I'm doubling up on what this looks like, I need another three by three coming off of this. And 
And that's supposed to be construction, because it's going to be hell to uh, extrude that. So if I go 3x3 three three off of that, that is basically, this is just basically the distance to the, um, the thing that I want to create. So, this is the most reliable way to interact with me. I, you know, I, oh man, <laughs> I'm not good at, I'm not good at communication. Uh, construction line, 90 degrees, and I'm just going to take it all the way down to here. Actually, I'm going to need four of these, so I might as well make it a, make it a cube. Cube it up. Tangents equal fun. Ah, it's the whole thing about straight, it's like, I don't know, Tomato's been like, more and more tempted to just become a podcast. Which I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> it's, um, it, it is, it's like a podcast that's sort of punctuated by the stuff that's going on on the screen, on the screen, right? I'll do jokes, I'll do bits, we'll talk about this, we'll talk about that. And then I'll, the work is what kind of is, the work and the, what I'm teaching you guys is kind of the, the stuff that punctuates it, right? One hour of pregame talk, I know. <laughs> no, he said recently, he was like, man, I just want to do like a podcast. It's like, all right, yeah, man, you do you. He's entertaining enough for it. Wait, this needs to be a construction line. Okay. There. So that's just, this guide right here is going to be for, I mean, not only for the chamfer, because I mean, I guess I'm going to want the chamfer to come all the way up to here, but I, I want to have a block that's going to have two of the screws with enough room on either side of it. It's pretty big, but it'll only come up in one location. And it went from 45 minute intro to one hour, 30 minute intro. It, it depends on what he's talking about. If, he, if he's having fun just talking, he'll do, that's, that's what I love about streaming is he could just do whatever. You know, nobody's holding a gun to my head telling me that I have to do this amount of content or I have to do this thing and that thing. It's like, whatever you want to do. I like your current stream format. Well, I'm going to change it. I'm going to, I'm going to become a hot tub streamer. That's I gotta, I gotta stick with the meta or I don't get enough viewers. And if I don't get enough viewers, then I can't afford to be on public health care. <laughs> uh, my life sucks. <laughs> I can't make over a certain amount of money or I don't get uh, insulin, which is nice. That's nice. It's a nice way to live your life. Uh, okay, so I need a box that's going to house these screws, and I need to give them that 3 by 3 millimeter radius. So I'm going to go down to the center here, which is the center of all things. You got no supervisor. Best way to build stuff. Yeah. Supervisor. Okay, 3 by 3 there. And then I'll do another one on the other side. I could just mirror these, but I don't know. I feel like I'm better than mirrors. I feel like it's it's like below me to, oops. It's like kind of below me. I'm kind of more popular than that. Like, I mean, when you have enough viewers, you know, then maybe you can talk to me. But before that, I'm just, I'm just not interested in any kind of interaction. All right, uh, which one was that for? I think that was, I think it was like this. That and that, and then let's do our four millimeter. These screws will be kind of close to each other. They might be too close to each other. But it's gonna have it's gonna have a look. It's gonna look a particular way. I'm on the age pension. Most I pay for any meds is six fifty. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. I'll come back in three months and update the weight. Yeah, man. Take a walk every day. Yeah, what are we talking about? Sorry, I missed that thread. Yeah, bike rides, walking. I need to get back into the the habit. I need to start getting up early again. But yeah, man. If you 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 do it. I dare you. I freaking dare you. I Okay. So 4 mm 2.6 that apparently freezes the computer. All right, there we go. And then 1.8. Then another 2.6. That one is not even that's not even on the thing. What was I clicking? 2.6. And then 1.8. Oh god, I missed. 1.8. Yep. So that's just the the gaps for the screws so that the screws have something to grip on. Um not done yet because these two screws need 
a thing. So we'll do another box. I'm doing everything with boxes today. We'll take that out to here, which is three anyway, and we'll take the other one to three, and I'll do that on the other side too. Even though I don't really need to, I'm gonna do it anyway, just in case any of this stuff changes. So three by three, and then that is gonna become its own box. I'm gonna need to do this like six times. So create a three point rectangle from this point to this point, back to wherever we are to tie it together. And that will get a that will get a fillet on it. Actually, probably the whole thing should be filleted. Uh, maybe I'm gonna have to change that. I gotta think about that. I might have to manually add a add a line into this. I didn't think about that before. I think I have to manually add a line into it. All right, well, we'll manually add a line to it because, I mean, that's what you guys asked for. So, you know, what what choice do I have? I've got to follow your rules. Um, thing is, that is going to be... That's less than... It's more than three. So what is that distance? Inspect. That is not those two. Four millimeter. Oh, that's easy. So I'll do four by four. And that's, that needs to be a construction line. Same thing here. Nope. Oh yeah, no, that was, the, that was the one that I wanted. Four. And then I'll just put a line in there, I guess. Just like that. I'll just manually... Oh god, I missed. Because, uh, I mean, I could I could do the fillet operation on it, but I don't think it'll... No, maybe that would work. Maybe I could just do a fillet on that corner. What's up, Malk? Who's the mode is that? the hell is that thing? Matty? <laughs> oh, I see. It's it's. I thought it was like a weird nose. What crazy stuff are you up to? This is all my gaming computer. I, I said all I do on this thing is masturbate, but uh, no, this is my gaming computer. This is where I play games. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we could do like a Valheim stream or something. It's a B. Oh my god. Between Maddie and Voice Box, we got all B emotes in here. Yeah, fat and not with the Voice Box emote. <laughs> Looks very gaming. Yeah, look at look at it game. Wow, look at that. It's beautiful. Um, looks very computer. A little bit computery. Um. Yeah, this is my gaming computer. I've I've been putting off this this uh, sort of suite of mods for quite a long time, um, and I I would like to bring my computer into kind of like a better design space. Valheim did an update recently that broke AI. You aren't missing much. Ah, fuck. Well, for me, the stuff that I need to do in Valheim is like the busy work, the busy bee work. So now this isn't going to be able to be four by four basically needs to chop this corner. What is that distance, though? Oh, that is four. Okay, so I'll do the same thing with this corner, I guess. This is going to be a real nightmare. The, the way that I've been designing this thing, it's going to be a huge pain in my ass in order for me to uh, do the extrusions on it. Blah, blah, mineral oil. Are we, are we done with this yet? Are we done with that? Man, <laughs> every time you guys see a computer, mineral oil, water cool. This is an air cooled computer. I've just gotten some new materials to make this thing work nicer. And we're doing a bit of 3D printer to make things uh, kind of fit together nicely and have kind of a look to it. The enemies will swarm your base and destroy all of it. Uh, I'm not liking that. Because uh, Gunnier and I built our base sort of... It was originally on a hill, and then we, we knocked down a little bit of that, that old hall and moved it all down to, like, separate buildings down the hill. We've made a beautiful little village, basically, for us to kind of, like, do the upgrades to. We still have to beat the, the final boss. What's up, Clue901? Um, but, like, we even have, like, a basement bedroom area for, for you know, our... our our whole thing, it's awesome, right? It's a really nice little base. But the problem is, 
we've spread out a little too much. And so all those enemies keep coming in. I think I got a package delivered just now. Are we putting lasers in this computer? You know, I'm actually low on lasers around here. I need to, I need to just buy some lasers just to have them. No, I'm orange LEDs are as far as we're going with this. We got a blue and orange motif, although I've, I've changed it to purple. Purple and black mesh, making it look like an old radiator cover, like for an old apartment. This could be like a dollhouse radiator. Anyway. <laughs> Even if I had a tiny little 12 by 12 millimeter fan, I don't think I'd put it in. But, un but fortunately, I don't have a 12 by 12 millimeter box fan. <laughs> <laughs> amber lamps. Yeah, I'm going to fill them with amber lamps. Okay, um... 4x4, four, four, 4 millimeters off of this, and then I do a line through the whole thing. They fixed the AI update yesterday. Ooh. Okay, so, so it is actually functional. <laughs> Won't get completely destroyed. Um... How do I want to do this? I mean, I can come out of the... I can come out of this at a particular angle, right? And I can try to get it right. 45 degrees into there. Yeah, I guess I'll just do geometry. Why not? <laughs> 3.538e to the negative seventh degrees. What? Yeah, we'll go with zero on that. Thank you very much. Let's lock that down. Zero, enter. Does that not... Does it not... Does that not make contact? I think it does. Oh, I see. It wants me to put another line on this or something? No, that's good. We That worked. Okay, so that worked. I guess I can keep doing that. That looks really far away. What's going on there? Why does that look so far away? What's going on? Wait, what? 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 Are they all? I guess they're all like that. Yeah. Okay. They're all like that. Whew. Excuse me. I'm like burping, burping lava, burping hot lava. Uh, what's forty-five degrees on this side? Oh, maybe here. There we go. This one I can lock to 45. And then this here at zero. I need to make sure to type the number in and press enter on it or else it... Oh, now it ruined the line. I need to make sure to type in the number and press enter. Otherwise, it, it, might, uh, it might not drive the dimension properly. You son of a bitch. All right, four, five. Right, 45 like this. There we go. That just locks it in. Make sure that it does its right, the right thing. I love how it added this construction line here. <laughs> this is a mess. This is a mess. We'll clean it up, but it's, it's getting to be a bit of a mess. Bit of a mess. At 45, 45, 90. 90 degrees. Zero degrees, all right. Holy shit. What is it? What the? Man, that's a, uh, why, why? Okay, all right, whatever. That's a, that's a big line. Nope. I'm just typing numbers. Escape, escape. Been holding off playing. Oh, until they fixed that AI update. See, I didn't hear anything about that. Four or five. Man, when this thing gets into angles, it's just doing whatever it wants. It's really strange the way it's treating a lot of this. Uh what's that? 180? That is that is not nope. Nope. That's close enough, I guess. 
Yeah, because the idea would be to have those lines coming out. Let's uh let's turn that into 45 degrees instead of the square. Get rid of the square, get rid of that. Draw a 45 diameter line, uh, then use extend it. Oh, you could do that? Well, ah, I'm gonna keep doing it this way. <laughs> Because, yeah, if I, if I specify 45... Oh, I can't force it over here. 90? There we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting kind of bonkers. What the... F what the fuck? All right, whatever. <laughs> it's just... It's just madness. It's just madness. That's all. Okay. I'll have to clean that up later. So, yeah, the, I, I got to do this in four locations now. This is going to be a nightmare. I mean, I could just mirror it. I Yeah, let me just mirror it. Let's take this and this. Well, we don't need this. We can just take you, you. No. Solid one. No, no. Okay, hold on. I got to select all of my proper lines. I got to take these lines and this one and this one and this one. And this one and this one and this one. I mean, we could technically make this a pattern, but... um. Oh, I don't have a center line right now. Hold on. I need I need just like any old line here. And make that into construction line. This is the weirdness of AutoCAD, right? I need one there, and then I need one here. And those are just mirror lines for me to create. Actually, mm, no, I, I can't use that, can I? I guess a pattern would probably be a better idea, but I don't know how I can space that out. Because I can mirror... Okay, so I can mirror that to the other side. I would have to... Rotate it or something. I think about that. If I make it into a square pattern, I can repeat it only the certain number of times. Alright, let's try a pattern. Pattern might be the way to do this. I just don't know how to how to specify that it needs to go to a particular location. It's funny is I could actually make it into an object and uh, it would be easier to do in three dimensions than it would be in two. I don't want the construction line. I want the solid line that's under the construct. You, you son of a bitch program. You've betrayed me for the last time. I can't get to the... I can't get to it. Yeah, I guess a circular pattern would be the way to do it. And then repeat it four times on a circular pattern. I want a solid line that's underneath. If I hold this here, I think it should change now. Usually that's the way it works. I can't get to a solid line that I placed underneath this thing. <laughs> My anger. Anger. Anger is my middle name. Uh, it's not letting me do it. What if I do this? I don't think it'll I don't think this will work. Because don't shouldn't you be selecting the lines and not the planes? I don't know if that'll work. Create, uh, what is it? Circle pattern. Yeah, I've got to select lines for that to work. So not you. No. Please deselect. Oh my god, it's not letting me unselect the line. Are you, are, are you serious about this? Please stop selecting the line. I got it for one second there. I got it. Stop selecting the line. No. Delete. Just there. Nothing. Okay, you. There is a solid line in there, and I'm going to freaking find it. If there is no solid line... No, there's definitely a solid line. Here it is. Eh. I almost had it. Is 
it highlights for like a split second. Oh, that was it. That was it. Which pixel do you want me to click here, AutoCAD? Can I right click? No. It's fun. Till next time, gonna get some sleep before the sun pops up. Oh, I hate that. That gaming moment you have where you're like, you know, the sun's gonna start coming up soon. Good seeing you, man. I think you can drop a mouse all around the lines you want. Ugh. There's like a pixel that's going to highlight the line that I want. I just click wildly until I... See, it's not... They said that AutoCAD didn't do that thing where you wouldn't be able to click the line. But I think they were pulling my chain. I read about, like, oh, if you just hold it over the line you want, it'll, it'll switch to the other one that's underneath it. I don't see that happening at all here. Oh, there it is. Oh, maybe that is what you had to do. If I hold it on one pixel for long enough, it'll realize that there's another line underneath it. This is going to be a mess. This is just going to be a mess. You guys will see, though. This will come out in the wash. Everything will, everything will look all right. So I want to repeat that from this center point four times. And is that it? Is that going to do it? Well, it's off over here because of the dimensions. Yeah, see, that one's on target, but the other ones are off because the change in dimensions. It's not quite... Uh, there's nothing I can do about that on a circular pattern either. So I might as well just mirror it around those those things. Because Fusion 360, yeah, right? Um, I mean, I can just paste it into place. So back to back to this game. Click. Wait for it. Nope. So if I hold the mouse here and I don't touch anything. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> okay, so I have to actually move the mouse a little bit. Come on. Oh, that was... Ah, got it. So I had to move the mouse within the line vertically in order for it to highlight the entire line. And I guess it, it has to be between the check marks of the dotted line, but the dotted line doesn't change size as you zoom in and out. So you can't zoom in to alleviate this. This is great, great programming right here, guys. I mean, it's a, it's a really good drawing program. I think, it, I think it works very well for a lot of the stuff that it does, but every now and then you run into something like this where I feel like punting my only computer. I was definitely holding down control. Okay, there we go. Yeah, all right. You, 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 and you. The problem with cutting and pasting this, yeah, I have to use mirror image so that if I edit one of them, the others edit with it. In ACAD, I think you can hold control and click. Yeah, I, when you're in th the 3D modeling part, then you can do stuff like control and click and mousing over and stuff like that. It's got all those, you can right click and, and there's the whatever stuff is in that, you know, in that same location. You can actually sift between them and do stuff properly, which helps a lot when you're doing um, circuit board design and stuff like that. But, but in the drawing part of it, mm, there must be another way that I don't know about. Just select with a selection box and deselect the visible extended construction line. But it doesn't... No, there's, like, several construction lines that are literally, like, on top of this. But I... Uh, uh, okay, um... So what am I going to do here? I'm going to... I guess I can create a mirror... ...on this line. And then I'll pop that over to the other side. Which it didn't do. Oh, because... No, I don't need the mirror line to be... This... This... And then that will be mirrored over there. So if I edit it on the other side, that'll work. What? This is the only way that I know how to do it. The circle pattern doesn't work because the dimensions of this case are different. 
That's how I'm doing it. You just gotta live with it. <laughs> A bunch of mirror structures over here. Ugh, trying to trying to keep the design of this case like kind of regular, but um, the other thing is like if I cut and paste this, then I need to have all of my construction lines with it, or things get unconstrained, and we don't like that. Yeah, it's not square. I mean, could I? No, it won't move with everything else. If I made it, if I if I busted it out so that it was square, and then I did the circle pattern and then I lowered the that's not going to work. Basically I need it to like I need to be able to specify a point that it that it repeats on and I don't think I don't think we have that operation in Fusion 360. We'll just take the numbers and just make it again. I'll just make it again up here. I hate to do that but whatever. Okay, so 3x3 three three coming off of here. 3x3 three why did you not tab to the... Mm. Three by three. Then another three by three. I could actually have mirrored it here. Well, it's too many mirrors. I don't know. Smoke and mirrors. Three by three. That one in there. Get my numbers out of the way. Numbers are all in the way. You... <laughs> I don't even know which numbers go for which square. <laughs> three, oh, it's the magic number. So that'll be three by three there. Three by three there. Technically it should go to that line in case I edit that line. That should probably be constrained to that line. I'm gonna, did I constrain these to that line properly? I think I did. That's what this is. Yes, yeah, so let's go back up. Let's go back up to here. And we'll do... Goodbye box. Let me do my circles first. So four. Four. There's probably an easier way to do this. I wonder if I could have done this by designing just one corner piece and then repeating it a bunch of times? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> uh, four, 2.6. Probably would have been the way to do it, right? Array polar? Literally all I can remember. <laughs> it's okay. Array, a polar array, possibly. My Fusion 360 anxiety and impulsive aggression disorder kicks in again. Well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm an amateur at this stuff. I'm an armature. 1.8. This is the only way I know how to do this. By doing work. I, you know, to be honest, like, I, what I really could have done here is taken one, one section and done one screw hole, one screw hole, one screw hole, and then repeat it, or or mirror it appropriately, or wait until I get a solid object out of this, and then mirror that solid object. It's Fusion. I really like Fusion's interface, but all the weird behavior drives me nuts. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. And and for these for stuff like this, like it's the same thing when I'm building uh, like an electronic circuit, um, or if I'm making software, I do the same thing. Which is once I put it together and I staple together all the little bits and pieces, and I get something working, I have a much better understanding of how I think I should probably be putting it together. And at that point, I start a completely new file, and I start working from there. This feels a lot like that. Because, I mean, this stuff is getting convoluted, and I'm starting to kind of learn what the shape should look like and what my numbers should look like in order to get the shapes to look right. And so as I'm working on that scale, it feels like at a certain point I should be like, ah, let's start over, let's just start over. <laughs> and then and then I'll be able to do it in the neat and organized process that Fusion expects all engineers to create stuff with the first time around, which is n just not the case. It's just not how people work. So, you do the same way? Yeah, it's reassuring to know that other people do that. The, ah, fuck it, let's start over method of creating stuff. And that's essentially what this computer project is, too. This computer project is me looking at my old 
uh, you know, VCR sized modded computer case and going, ah, I should do it again now that I kind of know what I'm getting into. <laughs> That's what we've been doing. So, three by three and stuck to there. See, it doesn't feel like it's stuck to there. Control Z my way out of it. Uh, I'll do the expanse by three and then I'll let the other one be driven by that X there, there. It doesn't give me the symbol though. I'm just thinking about what dimensions I might change in the future, so. Making sure that as stuff moves, I can move with it. I can't work differently with fusion because of the often unexpected behavior. What's unexpected? Uh, I guess, yeah, there's, there are things. So do I do a box or should I just go four millimeters from here? I'll just put a line down. The stuff with angles is so weird in Fusion. It's like, hey, I'm going to measure this angle from like the other side of the drawing. I gave up with learning open CAD. Holy fuck, that is some strange behaviors. That drives me more nuts than Fusion. I yeah, I haven't really branched out into other CADs. Everyone has their own method of doing work. Yeah. How's it going, Griffy? <laughs> Thirst and waffles. Rear. <laughs> By the way, if you stream, uh, you should get this plugin which blanks the initial Chrome page instead of having your often visited pages up there. Because it like, uh, it'll show like your email. <laughs> I like how Thurston moves his, all his, his shoulders and looking at stuff. That little head jerk is perfect. <laughs> okay, anyway, back to work. <laughs> Get back to work! So non-construction lines to define the outer edges of this thing. Oh, it's not four from there. It's four from the edge. So that's actually... That is wrong! Uh, how can I drive that dimension? So that's why I did the box before. Yeah, I'll just have to draw it from edge to edge. So make another construction line from here to here. And this one is four like that. That's the dimension that I want. Here to here. And then four. I hear a leaf blower. Oh, man. Okay, maybe, maybe not. It's it, This is this chronic uh, state of housework that, that this neighborhood operates under. No, 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 no. You know what? I can just draw the line from this edge to this edge with this little box here. So there we go. Even though that's, um, hmm. Yeah, that's a weird one. Oh, yeah, I don't need the box at all. What am I doing? I'm, like, going backwards in the stuff that I... Man, you guys don't want to see me in an open, open world building game. Rob Oz is always telling me about games that I might really like. It's like, oh, robot building something, something. You'd really like that. And I'm like, they don't want that. They don't want that out of me. <laughs> it's, I do stuff like that. There's an option at the bottom right to hide shortcuts on a new Chrome tab. I didn't know that. Hey, I got a plugin to do that. <laughs> I didn't want my email to get doxxed every time I open up Chrome. For simple parts, I'm back to just using direct G code and visualize it in camotics before I print and cut. Man, you and Flatulent Gonad are so hardcore. Gonad uses an ancient um, ancient etching software in order to put together his stuff. It's from like 1991 
it's ridiculous it's like it's like mac 2gs style to create you know stuff that he's going to cut out he's like oh i don't need to do anything more complicated i'm like what what ah, what is this <laughs> when i start getting into splines and and actual like 3d modeling of like three D of like like wavy surfaces and stuff like that that's when fusion is going to get real powerful real fast going at all C uses wooden racing pedals don't knock it man those things rule those are my favorite racing pedals in the world what flash is going at if you guys don't know he's he's got like a little shop in, in england and he does all kinds of madness there right um and one of one of the, the more recent things he's been doing is putting together uh pedals for his his steer his his driving wheel and so what he did is he took an old xbox controller and he took it apart and he has the thing like very neatly but also very uh sort of kludgy wired up to a bunch of wooden pedals that have springs on them it's a very neat project <laughs> anything he works on is usually as mad watching the gonad is compressed madness in person yeah if you could distill madness um it might take the shape of flatulent gonad software so old you need the the same hard to find laptop used to maintain a mclaren f1 yeah the thing is like those things and like especially professional cnc machines from like yesteryear there is a market in making an sd card to five and a quarter floppy adapter for those machines so you make this one product that works with that machine and for your little like spark fun level engineering project you can make like a hundred thousand dollars a pop because they can't find floppies the machine only takes floppies to transfer g-code over you turn it into another dead medium sd card and you know as long as you keep maintaining that and as long as it works solidly there's a market for it it's insane it's insane uh we want what is a is it 128 is that is that the right number of degrees for me to get all the way to this angle i'm, I'm gonna force this thing to do a different angle oh my god i hit escape and it like almost freeze the program let me give it 45 and see if it lets me yeah see it'll let, let, let me grab it and move it over to here i'm like 45 degrees from there just do it i don't care where you need that number out to here Now, why would that be in blue? Control Z. Why is there a break in the line right there? What is what is this? Oh, that's part of my 45 degree angle? What the f why do you exist in my drawing? Why are you there? Delete. Yes, that's what's <sighs> Oh boy. Love it. You gotta love it, right? still look for a laptop with serial and parallel ports oh my god you would just tuned in looks sweet are there any specific case features you're aiming for versus pc cases you buy yeah man so this is um this is my gaming computer is weird my gaming computer is weird i have this special power supply that i made that is on a heat sink that i cut out from a like an extrusion blank um this power supply is something that i made in 2011 and then I remade in 2013. And this uses, I guess I can call them, I can call them military, but these aren't these aren't specifically the military spec ones. These are the consumer specs, but it's it's Vicor, uh, Vicor Power Design, or Vicor Power makes these modules. This one turns 120 volts or 240 volts AC into 300 volts DC, which then gets fed into these two modules that turn 300 volts DC into 25 amps at 12 volts each so i have 50 with an upward it's like it can go further than that for like a, a brief period of time these use a lot in like science and and a lot in like military things but um they're they're very good power supply modules they can do 50 amps without breaking a sweat and they can go above that a little bit so 50 amps what are you going to do with that well the graphics card uses quite a bit of 12 volts i think it uses like 30 amps max which is why i have the 30 amp hobby plugs on this thing and then the motherboard itself has a module in it that is meant for cars and the module meant for cars can take from 11 to 13 volts 
and it will turn it into all of the different voltages that the motherboard needs. I've been running this computer since 2011. Different graphics cards, different motherboards and processors and stuff, but, but it's good. And, and since technically technology should be advancing in a direction that requires less power, which means that thing is gonna keep is gonna keep providing me with power well into the future for future builds. I've even got a water cool build planned for this thing and this power supply. This thing cost me a shitload of money. This is like a, a labor of love. I found these modules because I was working in reverse engineering IEDs, and at some point, you know, a Hummer exploded, which isn't all that, you know, that's not secret knowledge. Um, and so the circuit board for one of these ended up on my desk, and I was I was tasked with analyzing it and figuring out exactly what it was. Turns out, probably from a, some kind of military equipment, but, you know, U.S. military equipment. But the circuit board was so well made that a little bit down the line, I was like, I want to do a cool computer project. And so these modules came to mind. I'm like, wait, if I make it 12 volts, can I keep the rest of the computer 12 volts? Did a little bit of research. Cars are 12 volts. Found the car module, 140 watts. That works perfectly for the motherboard and the accessories. And then the rest... The lion's share goes to the graphics card. So that's been my gaming computer for a while. And what that's allowed me to do is to break up the shape. I don't have a big power brick sitting on the back of this thing. This whole thing is about the size of a VCR. Previously, on oh bother, 25 minutes of me charging up for an attack, um, I had this fan on it, this laptop fan. This laptop fan originally was 5 volts. Then I upgraded it to a 12-volt version of this laptop fan. And then I upgraded it back, I can only do one air quote at the moment, I upgraded it, with a lot of quotes, back to a 5 volt fan without changing the supply voltage. You can see there's a little scorching on the plug. This thing was a 5 volt fan running at 12 volts. It screamed. It made so much noise that my friends were going to disown me. So, I've been working for quite some time now to turn it into a quieter setup that still gets a lot of airflow. Now these aren't amazing fans. These are Noctua's. They're quiet. They move a little bit of air. They're good for 3D printing. They're not going to move an incredible volume of air. So I'm going to have six of them on this. <laughs> I'm going to have six of them on it and hope that with six fans and a denser fin configuration, which is hard for me to show right now, a denser fin configuration on the heatsink, that I'll be able to cool that thing adequately. And then I got carried away and started 3D printing everything for this stupid computer project. So what we're doing right now is we're figuring out a way, because I, I spent money, I spent money. I've got a carbon fiber plate that goes on the bottom of this, and then I'm, I'm gonna use this, this hex grid grating to cover the sides so that your finger poking can't get to that 300 volts DC um, at a certain point here, I would like to cover the carbon fiber in blue tape, and then we can put the computer together. You guys can see, you guys will be able to see what we're building towards here, because I need to start marking that off for uh, for the screw holes that I need to that I need to drill in the bottom plate. But yeah, that's been. I mean, that that's it's the same. It's it's pretty much the same thing for the gaming computer. I'm like, hey, hey guys, let's build a computer, and you guys expect me to be like seating RAM. Go oh, push down the RAM until it clicks. All right, let's get these wires here. And oh, I forgot, I forgot the motherboard power connector. I need to plug that in. No, not around here. Not around here. When I say we build a computer, we're building a computer. Like, <laughs> we're like, where should we put the chips? And then also down the line, what I'd like to do is add this thing, which is just two Nixie tubes on a board that I have not wired up to yet, but it will be get wired up to a couple Nixie controllers. These are, these are little BCD to Nixie things. Um, and then the, the Nixie tube power supplies down here. So this will be an orange numerical two digit display, hoping that I can wire this thing up so that I can, I can have this read current and it'll show how much current the computer's taking. But that's gonna sit in the case of the computer like next to everything. Um, probably would be a little noisy. I gotta be careful about noise inside of the computer, but uh, this is this is down the line. Right now, we're concentrating on the rest of the build. Um, all right, anyway, let me get back to what I was doing. Not even developing and soldering his own graphics card. Man, that would be, that would be very difficult. 
Yeah, this isn't a Linus stream. Yeah, because I'm not Linus, I can't just get computer parts. <laughs> they don't, they're not knocking the door down trying to, trying to make me like literally eat graphics cards. Forty five isn't no forty five ninety. What's the next one? One twenty seven. That seems like an odd number for forty five. No, that's not right. Do I really have to do this? Yeah, I really have to do this. I don't remember fucking geometry calculator. One thirty five. That sounds right. One thirty five. Yeah, you're right. 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 Can't believe I don't remember that. <laughs> oh, now it's measuring it on the 45. All right. Apparently, I'm just a big fucking joke to AutoCAD. I'm just a big joke. <laughs> what? Just because I'm an engineer doesn't mean I know things. I'm dumb. All right, control click. Let's get all these lines in here. More of an artist than an engineer. No, that's not true. I'm not that great at art. What is... Is that... Okay, I guess that's selected. Is that a mouse over it? No, there we go. Now it's selected. This is weird. Okay. I gave you emotes to do that with. Oh no, I shouldn't have selected anything. I need to put a construction line now, 45 degrees, 90 degrees rather, from the other one. Doesn't matter what length, it's literally just there to be a line. Uh oh, hold on, hold on. All right, I'm back. Okay, so, ah! See, let's take this. Oop. Boop, boop, all these boops, all these boops, and let's mirror it. Mirror. What? What do we? Ah, oh, man, all of chat is face palming me now. I've I've wronged them in some such way. Oh no, 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 no! I don't want the mirror line. Burp, burp, burp. There. Okay, cool. That's going to be a monster to extrude. Basically, we need this to sit above and below the grating, uh, and then I need, like, a cutout for the grating, right? Engineer's good at finding and doesn't need to remember all the info. I only got so much brain space, right? Everybody thinks I should still be able to get the eigenvalues out of a matrix when I know how to make a computer do it, and I know where to read how to do that. I don't... I don't know what an eigenvalue is anymore. What the fuck is an eigen... It's a really complicated matrix algebra thing. Eigenvalue. Characteristic root redirects to here, in case you wanted to kill yourself with knowledge. In linear algebra, an eigenvector, characteristic vector of a linear transformation, is a non-zero vector that changes at most by a scalar factor when that linear transformation is applied to it. The corresponding eigenvalue, often donated by lambda, is the factor by which the eigenvector is scaled. Geometrically, an eigenvector corresponds to a real non-zero eigenvalue, uh, points in a direction which is stretched by the transformation, and the eigenvalue is the factor by which it's stretched. If the eigenvalue is negative, the direction is reversed. Loosely speaking, in multi-dimensional vector space, the eigenvector is not rotated. In case any of you were wondering. Is that mu? Is that a different... Which one is that? Comprehensive list of algebraic symbols. <laughs> oh my god. All right, back out of this. You can't escape... Listen, <laughs> I'll escape whatever I want. Eigen faces. This is cursed. This is this is horror shit. This is going in my horror game. The eigenvalues of a face. When I did my final exam as a shipwright, we take all my textbook into the exam. That's that's a good way to do it, man. TLDR eigenvalues are very useful in decompositions. Yeah, look at what these faces are. What's being done to these faces? 
Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Whoever put that in a MATLAB it probably like has a ghost living with them now. Brr. Creepy stuff. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that I've forgotten. <laughs> oh, this linear algebra, man. It's good to know it. I think I remembered it exactly as long as I needed to to get to the other side of the test. That's, I think, I think my entire involvement with linear algebra. But it was cool to be able to take uh, physical parameters, put them into matrix algebra, figure out some values, turn those values into something that you would put into a feedback system, and then um, actually like see the physical result of the values, take that system, turn it into two lines of code that could then express that system and do like a balance bar with it. It was cool to do that. Like taking, taking high level mathematics and turning it into the real world was a lot of fun for me. I really enjoyed that. Um, that was a very brief amount of my studies of control systems, but it was still cool. Okay, so we've got screws on corners. We've got screws on midpoints. <laughs> Chad, it's not actually that hard to find eigenvalues and vectors. It's very mechanical. Yeah, it's like a set process that you just, you know, here's the, here's the matrix that's being described in the system, in the equation, and you just do certain things to it, swap things. I forget exactly what it was. There's like a, a formula and stuff like that. I'd have to read it again to remind myself, but it's like, it's it's not, there's not a lot of interpretation there. You do, 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 eigenvalue. And then you put that into something else that's going to help you mess with some other equation. But it's cool stuff. Because, I mean, this math didn't exist until the, what was it, like the 60s? And that shit got us to the moon. So physical control over stuff is, is neat. Put variables on the dia diagonal, dia blah, 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 blah. I can't even read it properly. Put variables on the diagonal and then take a determinant. Yeah. Good for converging on non-unique input parameters for numerical modeling. <laughs> even describing it, you guys have to like go into the word bank. It's crazy. Okay, um, we're done with this drawing. Finish the sketch. Review the body. So technically, what I would like to be doing is splitting this. And I barely want that grid to go into this area. But I guess I'll hold off on splitting it for the moment. Basically, we'll take the top piece. If I screw the top half onto the bottom, then the grading is too low. I want it to be that low. How do I want to do this? Well, what I'd like to do is take, take it from the top, first of all. So if I take this piece, not you. Ah. Is that a 3070? No. It's a 1080 FTW. 1080 FTW. I can't afford that kind of thing. Man, you know, let's just drop $2,000 on a graphics card. Brr. Um, no, man. It's, it's nothing special. Let's take that from the top. And I guess if I take it from the top, then I don't need the screw outline. But that'll be dropping one millimeter. 1080 is still good. Yeah, I like it. It's not that big. I mean, it is. it was larger than the previous card that I had, but... It's, I mean, it, the new cards are, like, even larger than these. They're wider and longer. I would never be able to fit... Well, I wouldn't be able to fit one in this, in this weirdo case. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to think about how I want to do this. How thick is the grating? Because I, I really kind of only want one millimeter on top of this thing. I'll settle for two. Two is going to give me something that'll push the plastic down. But then, then the lip is larger around the entire thing. Ow, that hurt. I shouldn't have snapped that against my fingers like that. Tapped it against my fingers like that. This side piece is how large? 
Hold on. Uh, calipers? Where did I put them? Everything is getting buried under all the parts. We're at a partial disassembly stage. After that, we, we can put it back together. So that thing is three, so it'll stick up by one, and then the thickness of the, the thickness for the thickness. How, how thick are we on this? It's like 1.7. Really? 0.7? Really? Really? It's like 1.8. I would almost say it's two, but I think that's, that's uh, uneven stuff going on. And 1.8 is as good as I think I can get it. Which means that if I took... If I split this here, I could split it by 1.8. And then I can work around that. Alright, so let's take the grating as being even with that piece, which makes it... Uh, makes it a little too close to the... Uh, We'll be on top of that, which gives it just a tiny little bit of space over the power supply. It's going to be tough to fit this at the power supply. I don't know if I'm going to need to cut the heat sink a little bit in order to make sure that it fits. That's going to be really annoying. I can always come up all over the place in mechanical engineering. Yeah. You can get the principal stress directions. Oh, neat. You can also use them to take the square root of a matrix. That's cool. Yeah, I... I just forgot uh, what they do, because all I remember is is we had to put them in certain equations in order to turn, you know, our our physical parameters into control, into mathematical control values that then had to go into physics equation. And eventually, on the other end, you come out with something. Will this run Windows 11? I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. Change the angle of one axis on a two-dimensional matrix. That's where I somehow relate the eigenvalue term to. In Germany, we say eigenwert problem. But I remember nothing about it besides that. Yeah, all I remember is doing the work. <laughs> I just remember doing the work. Let's split this so that we have a space for the grading. Actually, wait, the grading is going to go in... Okay, hold on, I gotta think about this. The grading is only gonna go in a small amount. I need the screw to go through that. I've, I've got to use my brain and it's kind of hurting me. Um, <laughs> I just got to think about how I want to do this because I don't need the grating to go into this structure fully, but I want to have something on top of it that presses down on it. So if I do split it, Hey, Parker Rider, how you doing? I guess I can rebuild it. So here's here's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I extrude. God, it's such a long distance to go. <laughs> I gotta travel all the way out. Let me just see if I can put this together. Try to try to do right by it. I do wish I had like a model of the grading that I could put in, but it's it's gonna be such a nightmare to produce. And maybe I could find it on one of the CAD websites, but I don't know about that. Did that? Okay, there. I remember doing matrix calculations with imaginary numbers. Yep. It gets even more cursed when you get out of the eyes and you have to use J. And it's like, wait, I thought you used these in programming. I'm definitely going to miss one somewhere, aren't I? <laughs> I'm going to miss one of these and then all hell is going to break loose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to cut the other one. I'm going to cut out a space for the uh, the grating. If I need to, I can build it back up. Or I could just have the grating go all the way out to the edges. Is that already selected? Oh, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to extrude this, and since the thing is 1.7... I need it to be at an offset of, it would be two millimeter for the top, 
two millimeters is not very much, but that's that's going to be the lip that's around the grating too. So it'd be offset, and I'm just going to throw an equation in here. And then the distance is going to be 1.7. I'll make it 1.8. Now, well, yeah, 1.8, because that's kind of what I measured. So 10 minus um, 2. Minus 1.7. And that'll cut it. So now we have our top piece and our bottom piece. I already hate this. Because uh, <laughs> if I want to do a chamfer on that before I break it, I guess I'll have to move that extrusion step. I guess I could use this, the face splitting commands in, in this as well. I've never done something like this, so I'm kind of learning as I go here. So what I want to do is on that top layer, I need two things. So I'm going to extrude this and this here now uh you know what let me just start with it solid i'll just start with it solid we'll just take all of these edges and we'll extrude them all on the top layer down i'll make screw holes for them i didn't do do this is, I mean, this is this is this will be really good to get done, uh, just because these are some of the the remaining things that I have to do in order to mount the hardware and the computer. So today and tomorrow we're going to be working on this uh, for a while, but it's starting. It's getting to a point where it's going to start to be assembled. Everything's going to start coming together. I need to figure out the fan panels. That's going to be a difficult thing. Depending on how this goes, um, that'll that'll influence the design of the fan panels. What specs will it have? The same ones that my old computer did. <laughs> I'm not upgrading. I'm just changing the the enclosure. It's a, t a 1080 FDW um, plugged into. Uh, it's like a gigabyte gaming motherboard. I don't know. It's a mini ITX, um, and then the processors. Gotta find out. It's some even number processor. I don't remember what processor I have. Extrude, start from object, top, and we'll go down two millimeter distance, minus two. These are the features that'll hold it on. What is that? Oh my god, I missed it. <laughs> this is a little, like tiny little corner. Look at a tiny little corner. Let's add that in. 40 selected. I got news for you. It's now 41. Ah! I zoomed too far in. There we go. Let's make sure we don't have that on the other ones, too. Good here. There's another one. Oh, God. Uh, my view controls. Okay, I got them back. No. No. Careful. Corner. Ugh. Probably easier if I did this from below. This drawing is just so enormous that uh, these are tough to do. Thing is, that whole corner is going to get extruded anyway. I'm just going to do this to be even. I got that one? Wait, but I didn't get that one? What does that look like? Oh, no. No, no, that's all there. That's all there. The pars of all. Cool work. Um, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if I'd classify this as cool work going on. What happened to you? Oh, they all went to... Where did they... What? Negative 10? Negative 2? Why did that... When did that change? Technically, if I took them to negative 10, I could split them later, but I don't want it to be... I don't want those to be pillars that go all the way down. There will be a little, a piece of it up here in order to help clamp it. This is what's going to hold the grating on the top part of the top panel of my computer project. The weird thing is going to be getting it to fit with the power supply right there. Yeah, I guess it's just going to have to be split. And then those will just clamp down on the uh, the material. 
We'll have to see how that works out. And then how to get the two pieces of this to fit together as seamlessly as I want. I'm gonna print this, yeah. Uh, my printer isn't big enough to print this, so we've gotta figure out how we can get things to meet up here. I'm gonna have to do a split on that, and then, I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. Um, if I make this part of one side, and then what it bolts to part of the other, I could do that. I'm sort of kind of like learning this as I go. <laughs> So now I want to take this, 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 and this, all of this, the whole disk, the whole disk. Ugh, it's hard to see what's highlighted. Is that everybody? Looks like everybody. I got the corner. Go to the other corner. It's like a thousand miles away. That, that, that. Wait, why is that selected? That should not be selected. Okay, let's cancel. Let's start that over. Extrude this. No, not that. Extrude this, this, this. Dish and dish. You, 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 and you. Okay, all those. There's a lot of scroll wheel operations on this. I'm getting a... Getting scroll wheel fatigue. That and that. This might be a little slow, the process of designing this thing. I'm hoping it comes together all right. Okay, and then, eh, 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 this and this. I go down to the next stop. Oh, that one didn't extrude at all. Neat. Well, we can fix that in post. I can still tell it to extrude this stuff out of the out of nothing and it will and then I can come back and actually make the uh structure by going back to the previous step. One of the one of the few things that Fusion is actually really good at. Why did this highlight again? Huh. So you can't do anything about it. Weird. Oh my god, so much clicking. I knew this I knew this is what we were in for, but probably would have been easier to use the screwed functions, huh? All right, I think that's all of them. We'll correct it if we need to, but we're going from object. So we're going from this object there, and we're going negative one millimeter. Uh, negative one, was that the wrong direction? Why does it say, why does it say join automatically? Cut. Oh, because it did select that entire thing. What the, what is it, what the heck? All right, so. Unselect you. It doesn't let me. Why? <laughs> what the hell? Oh boy, here we go again. All right. I don't want this. It it doesn't understand. It does not understand at all what what I could possibly <laughs> Oh, that's weird. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't get it. I wonder what's going on. Guys, it's okay. I'll figure it out. First of all, we need to correct this. I forgot to add these to that extrusion, so there. And then I need to select this stuff. Boop. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. There you go. All right. Oh, why is there a little, uh, 
a little lip there. Oh, because of the dimensions were a little weird. That's right. Okay, so that needs to actually be... Mm -mm -mm -mm. On this one... Let's just measure it. I'm just going to measure it and put the number in there. From this to this, that would be 1.9. So instead, on this, instead of going 1 millimeter... Or sorry, negative 2, I'm going to go negative 1.9. Actually, wait, that, no, that's, that's the, that, no, that's the wrong way. It's the wrong way. My math messed up on the cut step, which is this one. Maybe no body found a target intersect. So it would be, uh, what is it? 10 minus blah, minus blah. So instead, what I need to do is I need to go... I guess what I can do is go do, 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 do. That's what I can do. I'm just trying to think of the math here because I got 1.7 millimeters and I want that to be two millimeter from the top. So my offset can be eight millimeter. I can go negative 1.8. It still hates me for doing these operations. What do you mean no target body found? Offset of negative eight? There we go. But that screwed it up. Negative eight and then move one point eight. There we go. Okay, so that's that's two millimeter for the top. <laughs> it's just completely undone. It's just completely undone. If I move this step, I can't. I can't move it to the present time. If I move this one earlier, it doesn't let me move it. Just trying to fix this cut. See, it's there. Works fine. None of those shapes changed. I don't know why it's not actually ex executing the cut. Huh. Strange. I'll set a negative 8, distance 1.8. And the other one I just took from the top of the, the new object and extruded down. So I guess when I got rid of it, I don't know, I could just repeat it. I uh, will just cancel that and I'll get rid of um get rid of it. And then instead of those being two millimeter, what would they what would they then be? It would be two millimeter plus the 1.8. Maybe plus another two? They're going to be large. That's going to be huge. Big McLarge huge. I know. Whatever I'm doing isn't good enough. Um, <laughs> so instead of two millimeters, let's do four. Two on top, two on the bottom. And then the 1.8 for the grid. And we'll cut that later. So I'll take this step. And... Distance two. Well, we could just do that math in our head, right? Four, 5.8, negative 5.8. That makes them huge. I don't want them to take over the look of it, but that's just what we got. I'm not going to do them all the way down because we've got stuff that is going to get in the way of that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Little moment of thinking. Okay, so let's now, I guess, redo. Well, let me do screw holes in these first. Actually, no, that's uh, split first, then screw hole. Yeah, let's split it. I did math once today and got 135. Will that number work again? Yeah, yeah, that's actually the, yeah, that's our number. You got it, man. That is that, yeah. Mm hmm. All right, so I'm going to try to split this if it's a good time for that, but who knows. We're learning as we go. I don't know all the answers here. Why is this stuff highlighting? Oh, because I'm not... If I take it to an extrusion operation, that it'll highlight properly. E. Now we are extruding this line... Uh, I should I make another line for this? 
Because if the grating doesn't go all the way through this, I mean, we've got two millimeters to work with. I don't know, um, two millimeter from all of the edges. God, tweaking this is going to be very difficult. And I guess I can recut this panel if I need to. I probably will, because I think it sticks in more than two millimeter. But if, if it's like an integrated part of that, the split is going to look kind of jarring around the edges. I could just do an offset plane split on this, but we'll do it this way. Where I get to click a hundred different things. Oh my god, we gotta go so far. This thing is much larger than anything else that I'm used to making. Ah! What the hell happened there? Oh, I must have held held the button down a little too much. I think I was holding <laughs> accidentally held shift and everything went into rotation instead of <laughs> Ah, that's the wrong piece. You know you yes. You yes. Okay. So taking that oh no, not done yet. Not done yet. You, you, you and you. You can 3D print that mesh so you get perfect... I don't... Uh, what? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Yeah, it would be annoying to... Well, modeling it would be the really difficult part, because when you get repeated structures like that, I mean, it's possible to do it, but uh, Fusion will eat itself. All right, see, Fog Rider. Press pull. How does that work? I don't think so. Bioforms, what? Okay, uh, ba 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 ba. So, yeah, the same exact operation, only this time I think it'll actually work. So, my offset is going to be start from uh, object, and the object is the top, and then I'm going to go for an offset of. Mm, is that a good idea? Hold on, let me think about this for a minute. Well, if I take it, see, the top we want to be two millimeter thick, so. Parzival, stop trying to remote pilot me. Yeah, we're going to offset it by negative two millimeter, and then I'll split it. I mean, I could have just used, like, a like a, a split operation on this thing, but um, we're taking it from the top, offsetting it negative two, and then I'm moving 1.7. And I kind of feel like I should have, like, a lip on that. Oh, yeah, negative 1. 1. 1.8, negative 1.8, negative 1.8. And so that's going to create our split. And I could draw another box on this thing so that I have a little bit of material behind the grating, because it really only needs to be a tiny, like a tiny little cutout. But instead, uh, I guess I'll just start with it this way and I can, I can work into other stuff. Oh yeah, and I forgot, to, I forgot to select the outside of these things. So I need to do that. I need to add more objects to this. Uh, maybe I do need to explore going into the other types of cutting that this thing can do. Who can bother? Who can bother? Keep doing things that I know how to do. <laughs> Thanks, Avian. Appreciate it. Thanks for the help. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of those lately. I don't know. I don't know if they know that I have a 1999 station wagon that absolutely does not have anything even resembling a warranty. Create planes around the holes and then extrude planes around the holes. I just don't get what you mean.
Well, making a making a plane on the x-axis or whatever, or z-axis, whichever axis it is, and then using that as the split, I could do. I probably should. I don't know. I'm doing it this way. I'm almost done. Keep getting the Ford letters. There's somebody who has my last name that uh that actually there's several now who just can't seem to sign up for for like email notifications properly. And so like part of it suddenly become my job to unsign them up for everything. It's obnoxious. It's so bad. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. I don't know if I like the concept of having the whole thing split like this, but we do need to have a lid that closes on the thing. And I think, oh yeah, the IRS, the quote unquote IRS calls, because totally, the US government is totally gonna give you a phone call. And that's totally how they operate. Well, I could build up a lip around this if I wanted to. Um, I'm not gonna do that yet. I'll, I'll probably have to do this in like a quarter at a time test. Because we still, I still need to figure out how I'm going to split this up so that it can be two pieces that are attached to one another. That's going to be the trick. Emails I have in my own domain name keep... Yeah. I'm wondering if I should split one here and then the other here. And the two would hold together. But then, then I would have like an overhang or that this piece wouldn't be held down by anything. It's like, if I do one screw on one side the other screw on the other how does that work think about this hold on yeah i don't know i don't know i'm gonna i'll have to figure this one out because i don't know how i'm gonna split this into i mean i know how i can erase like part of the object in order to print it out that's fine but it's the um holding it together here that i'm not totally confident about I mean, I could, I guess, like, make this into a piece that drops in on both of these and holds down both of the long, the long spans. So that'll squish down everything at once to the bottom piece. And it'll be two separate bottom pieces. So if I have one unified top piece with a seam somewhere out here, and even just like a tapered line, because this, this needs to hold down and it's not going to get held down by the rail support. So that as a piece that drops in and has the two long pieces go into it. And I need to make sure that the 3D printer can handle that level of, uh, of detail. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna work out some of the other pieces of this and then we'll figure out, because I, I think this, this piece right here, this top piece right here, it needs to basically bolt through everything and then hold down a long rail. I don't know if I like that. I don't know if I like that, but I think I'm going to have to live with it. I think I'm going to have to live with the decisions that I've made. Terrible though they may be. Okay, so extrude. You, 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 you. This and this. Uh, yeah, let's just go on a journey. Let's go on a trip to all of them. We'll do the cap head extrusion. I'm, I, look, man, I may not be the, doing stuff the way that you do it. I do stuff my way. I'm, I'm creating very simple 3D printed pro uh brackets and stuff basically is what we're doing right now and i may not know everything about fusion i can't <laughs> can't pay attention to one person this whole time i know i can use the screw tool to make these but these this has been how i've been doing this for a long time uh for the rest of the build of this and so i want to keep that consistent look to it too so i don't, I don't know man i'm gonna keep going with the operations that i know Much clicking has occurred. Exactly. All 
All right. Zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in. Zoom out, zoom in. Keep zooming. Man, I think the as as far as generation names go, Zoomers is a really dumb one. I would hate to be called Zoomer. What the fuck is this? Just because I'm a kid, you're going to call me Zoomer? It's a, it's a bad generation name. From object, this guy, we are going to go negative one, and that's our cap heads. Negative one. Ta-da. There we go. Now I need to take the 2.6s. Or no, I'll take the small ones. And I'll extrude those. Yeah, it's like, I, I'm, man, I'm not going to stop everything and like one person. Ah. I like to get called Coomer or Doomer. It's, it's, yeah, it's just a bad generation name, you know? Here, we need this. Uh, let's see. So that's the outer radius, and that needs to be through a specific thing. And the inner radius needs to be through a specific... Well, this one, I mean, I can do an extrude everywhere, too. But uh, this one has to be a special operation. Ah, keep selecting the wrong thing. Cancel. Every generation name is stupid. Yeah, Millennial is kind of dumb, huh? Boomer. <laughs> and you know the ones who started it called themselves the greatest generation. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair they came up with the whole system and then huh, I don't think they were the first but still it's just funny to think about it that way <laughs> ah! the zoom level is somewhat fixed to like what object you're you're looking at at the time so it can tend to be either overstated or completely understated. It can be very frustrating. All right, so I'm taking these three circles in their own extrusion operation. You and you. You and you. Kind of getting hard to keep track of all this stuff. I mean, I could have put the screws in a different drawing. It would have been good to separate these out by drawing, because then the extrusion functions are much easier to operate. But if I want to change stuff in here, then all I need to do is change the base drawing. Jesus Christ. Okay, so I'm extruding that from... Do -do 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 -do. Start object this one and then we're going I mean positive in any number of millimeters I'm just gonna make it one millimeter one millimeter cut check on our work make sure it looks right that looks right these are the problems that'll come back and haunt us later this is the largest piece of 3d printed stuff that I'm putting into this computer it's uh getting a little crazy but I'm hoping it'll look all right. This seems like it's a little too far, even though I did do this in the same manner as the other ones. I guess I could probably cut it down a little bit, but... Nah, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it alone. I think it'll be okay. Kind of makes these look a little small, though. But it's meant to come up to that edge. Yeah, that's it's fine. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. I could press and pull it later if I really need to. If press pull will understand what I'm trying to do. Going to sleep? All right. Get up early tomorrow to drive through half of Germany. Oh my God. New camera and glass. What camera? That sounds cool. Um, I'm gonna be here doing this tomorrow. We're gonna, we're still working on this thing. We got work to do. We got work. I gotta do work. Yeah, there's a lot to do with this, and it's going to become a 3D printing factory soon, but... Good if you can make the screw properly fit in there. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. There's just this, These are the dimensions that I've been using for everything else. Leica M10R! I don't know anything about cameras. People who know cameras would probably be able to chime in about that, but oh, that's awesome, man. I need to, like, go on a road trip 
to like get a thing. That sounds like a fun thing to do. <laughs> the problem is there's well, okay, so the the junk dealer, the the guy who sold all that cool like old electronics junk, he was in Pottstown, which is not far away, but he's been closed since like many many years ago. So cut. Uh, distance all. I always love a good cut all function. All right. So without the sketch there, we got the beginnings of our idea. Oh my God. It's going to take us an hour to zoom in on this. Come on, buddy. Okay. There we go. We approach slowly. It's like the Monty Python thing with the guy uh, charging the castle. All right. Um, screw holes, mid span. Ugh. Oh, my axis is all messed up. Why are you doing this? Ugh. Leica APO Sumicron M1-2, 35mm, a Leica Sumilix, and a Leica Tri-Elmer. Yeah, I don't know any of this stuff. Gen B is now most people living. What? B is equal to butthurt. I wanted to type, <laughs> but it may be more right than wrong. I don't think there's, I don't think there's any gen people, are there? Twenty five percent less the general price. That's awesome. Oh, it's direct from the factory. Oh, that's cool. That sounds cool. <laughs> I will orgasm all the time tomorrow. You do you, man. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so printing this in purple. If it's good enough for pars of all yet. I know I'm doing all this stuff wrong, but I'm doing my best. Um, so screw dropping from the top down into the bottom layer. The distances are a little weird, but this thing needs to sit in the rail, and the rail is going to support that. Uh, the fact that it's in the corner should keep it in the right spot. It's this top span that I'm worried about not coming in properly. And I think maybe what I need to do, I don't really know how to do this, is create some kind of a complex cut in this. So I can sketch on face in order to cut it and make, um, hey man, we're dealing with, we're dealing with individual millimeters here, right? I'm gonna make a one millimeter thing that comes out from that and then a one millimeter cut in that piece. It's a strange operation. How am I going to do that? How possibly could one live with their choices in this manner? Um, let me think. I think now. It wasn't the wrong way, it was the hard way. Ah, yeah. What, what were the, there were like a shift and control and other operations that I could do. See, the thing is like the stuff that I've been working on has been small. Um, the only reason that this was like kind of complicated and annoying is because I had a weird dimension for the grading that this thing needs to clamp in. Um, and well, it's, there's just a lot to it. <laughs> v groove. I don't know how I can cut a V. No, I think maybe just a square. I think maybe just a square groove and we can have this thing hold it down. Um, that may mean two sketches. Ugh, two sketches. But the thing is, like, if I can create... I don't need to do it on all four sides of this, I'm thinking. I just need one half of it, and then I can print... No, that doesn't work, does it? Hold on, wait a minute. If I print this... Yeah, this will mirror itself on the other side. And I can keep this as one piece. No, that's not going to fit on the printer. I need to split it on I need to split it both ways. If I make if I make the two cuts If I make two cuts in the bottom piece, I can print one corner and that'll go that way. Yeah, that one corner will rotate around all four, right? But that okay, this span is a different dimension from this span. It's not square. So with this span different from this span, that, yeah, I'm going to have to print two of them. One, two, like that. And then that will 180 degrees mirror itself. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have, I, I need all the clamps, right? Yeah, because these, 
No, I. Oh yeah, I need all. I need all the clamps. I need all the clamps because they won't fit on my printer. That's the problem. Won't fit on my printer. So. Those Leica lenses are pricey. I I didn't I haven't Googled anything that was mentioned, but Pogger, or sorry, Pickle Licker is uh is in for a trip, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna Google one of these. Leica APO blah 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 blah. Direct from factory too. That's cool. I wonder if you can get a factory tour. Yeah, <laughs> that's an eight thousand dollar lens. That's an $8,000 lens. It makes sense to make a road trip for something like that. Who, boy, that's a... Uh, woof. Uh, okay, so I need this piece to be... Yeah, camera stuff is incredible. Um, puzzle locks, maybe. I was thinking that I could sandwich it. Because, like, if I, if I keep this piece as sort of a joining piece and have it come back here i can do like a one millimeter like i can drop this this bar one millimeter and then i can have this have a one millimeter like just basically like a, just a square so hold on let me let me see if i can put this together uh let's see if i can actually get this to be uh separate pieces here yeah and i was wondering if i wanted to have like a lip on the back here have a one millimeter lip. The one millimeter lip doesn't print properly, and I really wanted this to be the top of the print. But I guess if I if I use support, which is going to use a lot of support underneath this, then that will be kind of rough, which is okay because it needs to sandwich the grading material. It just means out here it's going to bend really easily. And this is only two by two millimeter. I'm trying to make it minimal. I'm trying to make it hold on the grating, hold on to the grating so that it's uh it's suspended and it's also stabilized and it also doesn't rattle around. As it is now, I mean I could just drop the grating into the into the, the void area, but all right, let me continue to, to move forward on this and see if I can do the right cuts on this. So if I, and the bottom piece technically will have to be split, I think maybe that'll just get a split down the middle. I could put the lip on that, just a little, like one millimeter. The problem is those one millimeter uh, walls don't really come through properly on the, on the 3D printer. They're not, they're not that easy to print. I can drop the grid down, a the grading down a little bit, but I really don't want to have to do that. They're kind of pushing it with this. We'll see what we can do, though. All right, um, so let's see. It needs to go down and over. And if I'm doing that, then I don't want to re-extrude anything. I could have left lines in the drawings in order to do this, but I mean, I can cut out one millimeter from this probably do it with a new drawing, right? Great sketch. And then I'm going to take basically this whole span from here to here and I need I need a something that I can grab over there. Or actually actually I can do a three point rectangle. Go from edge to edge to edge. That's really all I need in this sketch. Finish. Oh, I should probably split the middle of that, too, because I'll, I'll use that in order to rejoin the other. Well, okay, so first of all, that, and then I'm going to extrude that. Oop. All right. So, okay. There it goes. Uh, extrude that. Oh, that's got a little cut in it from the... Uh... Wait, why is that even... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From the, the lids of the screws or whatever. And that'll be negative one... Ah, it's getting in the way, isn't it? That's not good. That's not good. Well, we can deal with that, though. Because it's only negative one. The cap head is literally on it. I've gotten away with worse. And then, of course, I need something to... 
split this apart from the other one. Because I'll need two pieces to come into this. And I'll need to split the ends here. How do I do that? How do I do that with just a line? Uh, <laughs> split body, splitting tool, and then there's an extend splitting tool. So I think I can take... Now, uh, can I select this line right here as my splitting tool? Nope. How about you? HBU. What about that? Body to split this. Well, it looks like that works. Cool. All right. Oh boy, this is gonna get this is gonna get complicated fast. All right. So split body to split this splitting tool. This edge right here. The mm, 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 order of operations. Select this right. Okay. Fusion. I'm gonna need you to work with me a little bit. Oh yeah, that's right. I chose the plane. That's what it was. And the body is this. That'll split that. Now that's a separate part. Wow. Wow. Okay, so. Uh, let's see. So I want that to extend halfway through. So I can probably go back to the sketch. Take the center point. Drop in a non-construction line. Straight down to there. And then that's all I want to do. And then, when I view the sketch, I can extrude. But the problem is, it doesn't know which one to join. So I guess I can, <laughs> I can make a new body, and then I can combine the bodies. This is a weird way of doing it. This is a weird way of doing it. And I don't know how well this fit is going to... I don't know how great this fit is going to be. As long as it holds on, it's okay. Try to like separate them out a little bit, but because then I've got <laughs> so many bodies. Did it recombine my split? You bastard! Because I got rid of that edge. Oh, that's annoying. Is one millimeter strong enough for the joint? I don't know. I really don't. I think one millimeter will be okay. It's in PETG, so. Was it, did it select join? Okay. I don't know if this is the best way to do this. This is kind of an awkward way to do this. This is getting a little weird. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of moving parts on this one. Yeah, when I, when I changed the distance, it turned into a different operation. Because it likes to do that, because it thinks it's helping. Man, that kept my split. Ah, no! Control-Z. Negative one! New body! I feel like I should probably go around to the various things and do that before I join these up again. I, you know, it doesn't need to be this long for the one millimeter either. I could, I could make it much shorter. I could make a, just like a little, a little one by one millimeter thing that kind of catches it. Well, I feel like that'll break. Um, one by two. <laughs> one by two arms of blue. Yeah, let, let me do that. I'm going to do that. Control Z, Z. And then I'm going to take that drawing, that sketch. And, ah, where are we? Okay, there we are. Delete that. Delete this. If I really wanted to be fancy, I could do like a... Have it come in and up and just be like a little peg. Because PETG is pretty strong. It's pretty strong for what it is. Um, but we'll just make this two by two. Two by two. No one isn't driven. Do -do -do. Rectangle, three point. U, U, two. That's still still coming up as whatever. 
rectangle, three point, this one, this one, two. Okay. Now it'll just be a two by two or a one by two, uh, like thingy that'll just uh, hold on to it. Finish the sketch. Dun, 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 dun. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's see. Now, should I have done... Uh, where are we? Okay. The extrusion here... Well, if I undo that, then I don't have this edge, and that edge defines the split. <laughs> this is weird. Okay. Uh, well, I, I mean, maybe I could just do this. I'll just hit this and do extrude to object. This is This is convoluted, by the way. This is not... Oh, wait. Uh, objects. Do do do. One selected object direction. Distance. Do one. One milli. Not two. What are you doing? One. One. Okay. Oh, did that not join? Did that create a new object? That's funny. Oh, that is one object. Why is there a line in the middle of it? No, it's treating it like two. What the hell? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. It just selects all... Okay, um... What? <laughs> wait. This one body, and then this one body. Body. Body five. Still body five. Oh, okay. I guess there's just a line on it now. That's weird. Whatever. Takes notes on best practices. I know, man. It's it's getting a little weird. It's getting weird. It's getting a little weird. I just don't get why there's a line across this. What body is this? Body five. Body five. Unview body five. Oh, it's a drawing line. Why is it there? It's like an offshoot of the original line? Or no, that's okay. So that's the drawing that I've made. But then why was there a midline on the part? Oh, weird. This is weird. Yeah, why is this line here? Is there like is there like a a difference in dimensions or something? Oh there is. Oh there is. What's going on here? No wait, no there isn't. No there isn't. <laughs> Uh, AutoCAD is just really sick of my shit at this point, it seems. All right, anyway, not paying attention to that. I'm going to unview body five. And we'll extrude these up one millimeter. What AutoCAD can't see won't hurt it. Yeah, that's so weird. Look, it just it decided to... Body one... Body one. I'm gonna control Z that. Hold on. Extrude this and this. And then if I do negative one, it says join. So I select join and it doesn't join them. It keeps that line in there. I guess that's just what it does everywhere. But like usually those lines are are they've got some meaning behind them, right? Gotta love CAD. I know. They are combined. They combine the entities. That's exactly what I'm Never mind. I'll no longer talk about that. Uh, <laughs> it's showing them as separate entities, even though they're combined, which is odd to me. Very strange. Okay, stop selecting that plane. It just got kind of fed up with my shit. <laughs> Unless that's a different dimension, but it's not. So I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. As long as that split's happening uh, back here and not anywhere near all my other stuff. So I need to split down the center of this thing, too. So I figure I figure that's what's going to hold down the edge of this, this plank, and then it'll be combined with this. That'll be part of it. And then over here, we got to do the same thing. Yeah, I wonder if I save and then come back. I mean, it's part of part of not knowing what the hell I'm doing is probably why this thing is messing up in, in so many different ways. It's finding all these nice, unique ways to screw this up. Unfortunately, two millimeters is like all the material that I can afford uh, on this thing because it needs to go around the entire perimeter of this. Um, 
I wanted it to be one millimeter, but but uh, yeah, it. I mean, that's going to go around the entire perimeter, and then that's going to sandwich on the grating. That split kind of annoys me. The split in the middle of it, like the, how we did this. So I might want to put like a one millimeter lip on this. My problem is one millimeter lips never print properly on my 3D printer. The one millimeter, two millimeters is like the, like makes a nice, a nice lip. One millimeter, all bets are off. It, it melts and it gets weird. Like a one by one, maybe I could do. But I would want, I would want that to not, cause that's gonna, when you look at the side of the computer, you're gonna see that huge split. Uh, in in between the the like grating openings, right? Well, anyway, let's uh let's chop this thing up. I mean, I need um. Wait, oh look, I split it all the way over here too. Well, that's actually good. <laughs> that's actually good. Oh my God, where are we? Okay, where is the sketch that we just used? That's no, this is the wrong one. Okay, let's uh, finish that one. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I guess we'll do a new sketch on that one. What I'm gonna do, like, once I get those two, I can do that one, and then that'll be the the last of that. So let's uh let's create a sketch here, and then that's simply just gonna be the three point boxes rectangle three point here here three ah uh, two i wasn't a sneeze that was me saying two uh create rectangle three point i'll be happy when i'm done this because uh i really want this computer back <laughs> i've gotten really sick of using this as my only computer it's been my only computer chat I don't have another one to use. Uh, yeah, two millimeter, two millimeter. We're gonna need those later. We don't need any of the other stuff. Finish. That's all it was. It's two boxes. So what I need to do? Oh, we already split that, so I can extrude this one millimeter up, negative one. Let's choose another profile too. You two, up one millimeter. There you go. Cut that. Cut it out. Cut it out of there. And I can unview that body. So that AutoCAD isn't tempted to combine it. You gotta hide stuff from the CAD program. And then these two, I'm extrude negative one, I'm gonna join. Yet they still retain all of these lines. I don't know what's going on with that. Oh, they are separate bodies? Or are they? I'm gonna have to like investigate this later. I wonder if I'm gonna have to come back and like combine stuff in a weird way in order to get everything to work out. Strange, strange stuff. Now, can we split this? Nope. What is a split body versus split face? Split with surface along vector chosen splitting tool. Now that shows origin and maybe I can just view origin and use the split tool to pop this thing in half. So body to split, lower layer, splitting tool, that plane. And that's gonna pop that thing in half. There we go. Split faces when you diss the socks at a bar on the south side. <laughs> oh man, I lived with socks fans uh, during, when did they win the series back in 20, Oh, back in 1965, I don't fucking know. It was like it was like early 2000s. The Sox won the the World, whatever series, and I was living with Sox fans. So I'd be studying control systems, and one of them was a chronic clapper. He was the kind of person that watches game and just pop, 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 pop. whole game. Actually, it was two Sox fans. <laughs> one was from Connecticut, and the other one was from Boston. And it was, it was all night, this. I'm like, I, like, could you just drink beer and just stop clapping, please? Just please stop clapping at your TV in your own house, like in the middle of Philadelphia. Like nobody, 
Ah! <laughs> I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand it. It was funny though. He's he's a he's a friend. I haven't I he knows that I stream. I don't know what it is about my friends, but none of my friends watch my streams. I think my content sucks. That's probably why they don't watch it. <laughs> All right, let's do the same thing to these and split them up, and then we'll we'll deal with the aftermath of what we're trying to do here. Throw batteries like the rest of us. Yeah, like the civilized world. Who's Santa? Like a like a normal person. Hey. Yeah, don't give don't give sports fans a uh, a toy that has a battery in it. That's not a good idea. That's a very very bad idea, especially when they're as belligerent as Philly fans. But for some reason, like like one time we booed Santa in like the 1950s, and nobody's let us live it down since then. You booed Destiny's Child, yeah, because they were wearing uh, Lakers colors. Like that's that's as deep as it goes. If, if Philly fans are unimpressed with what you're doing, they don't give you any, we don't give you any leeway, and that's it. And if you correct the behavior, everybody gets happy again. A very easily manipula manipulatable, manipulatable crowd. Um, there's not a whole lot to it. There's not, it's not like a, not like a complicated game we play, you know? <laughs> Santa was some guy that they found because the real Santa, I don't know what happened to the real Santa. He couldn't do it. So they found some guy to do the job and he was terrible. And he even apologized for being bad at being Santa. He was too drunk and he was skinny. So everybody's like, fuck is this? It was in like the 1930s. But it's defined Philadelphia sports from then on. Ridiculous. But the toy, the toy, yeah, they gave fans a toy that had a battery in it. And so, you know, what do you think is going to happen? All right. Uh, we are going to split the face. Body to split. You. Splitting tool. This. Can I, I, can I select two? My God. Wait, what did I just... Everything went red. I no longer see anything. Oh my god. <laughs> did I select the right face? I did. Okay. I never saw a bad Santa. Wait, why is it still... I guess I unviewed the one body and I didn't unview this body because we split it. I was like, why is it still there? <laughs> All right, so there's that. And now I need to take that drawing again. This is a weird, this has been a weird process doing this, putting this together. Negative one. And a join operation. That one actually joined. What did it heck? Why, why are those two separate over, all the way over there? What are these guys doing? Look at these. These guys are over here laughing at us. Look at them. See what they're up to. Come here. Hey, you. What's going on over here? What is this? Huh. Well, it's... Okay. I mean, it unviews with everything else. It just It's just like the CAD program is just confused. Weird. Weird. All right, so we've split out the spans. Oh, I, one more split operation. This is a weird one. I don't know if this is going to work out. I don't know if this is going to work out. What do you guys think? So I need to unview this, 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 this. I'll just unview everything. But the... What is my... What? Oh, that's that. Okay, well, we're going to need that. No, we're not going to need that. Not that. We're going to need the other bottom piece. This one, no. Nope. Nope. Yep. Okay, so now, split. This one. Oh, there's still... There. This. And this. 
by this. And we have 5,000 more objects in this drawing. Jeez. Okay. Uh, you know, I could probably take these, if I need to remake this again, I can probably design it on a smaller scale and uh, take the dimensions of this in order to give me the full spans that I want. Or I could just divide by two. Because yeah, if I need to, if I need to like gap these in order to get them to fit right, it's going to get hellish very quickly. It's going to be hell on earth. I wonder if I could just pop this surface down a little bit so there's no lip. It's like a 0 0.3 lip. It'll come out in the 3D print, I guess, so I guess that's all right. <laughs> the other thing is just to hope that those screw holes aren't blocked when, uh, when it goes to print. So I hope, that, I hope that does it. I mean, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible because I have a lot more stuff to design. I need to make something similar to this for the um, for the side panels, but I guess what I can do for the the side panel is just have them fit because they'll I can print I can print most of it right, so I can just have these press up against one another and then hold the grating in the middle of them, so this can just be held in by uh, pressure from the outside and then the 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 opening of the rail. It's unfortunate I can't do that with the rest of this. Those half span kind of things, but all right. Well, I got 3D printing to do now. <laughs> I got 3D printing to do, which is inevitably going to result in me yelling at my 3D printer because it's going to have trouble printing stuff that's this long. It's going to have quite a bit of trouble with it, but um, I can try to see if I can get any of this stuff rolling for tomorrow. You guys will be able to at least see some of this stuff. I'm just afraid of, of some of the edits that I'm going to have to do. Why is there a seam here? <laughs> Why is there a seam here? That's so weird. The way we designed this is so weird. Maybe I should have used uh, chamfer options and extrusions and stuff. I'm uh, trying to make it as simple as possible so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't distract from the rest of the build. So have to see if that works, I suppose. This way, the top layer is still going to be visible. If I need to build up a lip on this thing, I'll build it up from this piece, the bottom piece, because this, well, it'll mm, this will print with support structure, which means it's not going to look all that great underneath. That's not really where you should be viewing the computer from, though. <laughs> You'll be looking from, from above, so maybe it'll be hidden. I could do, like, an angle on this in order to draw it into the, the rest of the piece, but we have that heat sink that goes all the way up to almost the same level as the print. So fitting it in over here concerns me greatly because I don't, I don't have all that much room. I think this is the best I can do. <laughs> this is the best I could do. So I think I'm going to I'm gonna wrap it up here. We're going to call it a wrap here. I'm going to have a uh, quiet evening. Try not to be up too late. I'm going to be back at this tomorrow. I'm going to still work on this. We'll do more physical stuff tomorrow. I want to do more of the physical stuff, which includes covering the bottom platen in tape. So I'm going to take blue tape. I'm going to tape up this entire plate. We will install it. I have some new uh, new clips for it. I have these little these little pieces that basically just bolt underneath this, and then they hold it to the to that that uh, trough is what I'm calling it. It's just the the cutout and the rail. Um, that'll hold the base platen on. If we get blue tape on that, that means that I can start marking it up, and we can lay stuff out. We can figure out where the screw posts should be then take measurements so that we can do it properly. And then, God, I don't want to do this. Oh, I don't really want to take the vise off of my, I don't really want to take my vise off of the, the end mill. That's a complicated question, Havian. Um, I don't like answering it. <laughs> I don't like answering it. But th this, is, this is basically has become my full-time job, besides from consulting uh, and stuff. <laughs> so, 
But yeah, so I don't want to take the vise off of my end mill. I don't want to have to line it up again. If I have to, I guess I can. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it. I don't want to. But I can if I need to in order to put this plate on the on the XY table, and then I can use the um, bop, 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 bop. I can use the DRO in order to line it up. If I do that, I mean, so so a couple things that I need in the bottom plate. I need holes for the screws to go through and hold everything in place. I need holes for the wires to go through because because. Uh, some of the wiring I'm going to drop down below the plate. I need holes for the SATA connector for the, the, the SSD, and hopefully we can kind of keep it a little organized. Um, I don't know if I want to get so far as to even want dual look like. Um, I don't know if I want to make, you know, like in uh, Project Binky, how they made the clamps for all of the wiring. It'd be easy to do, but... Do you have any one, two, three blocks? Two. I have two one, two, three blocks. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a bunch of tie down stuff, but it's like holding carbon fiber on the mill without damaging it is, is kind of difficult. I'll have to think about that. Um, the alternative is me just hand drilling everything. I don't know if I can machine the um, carbon fiber plate. It's going to make a lot of bad dust. That's why we're going to do it tomorrow. And we'll try to get all that stuff together. So thank you guys for joining me for this. I mean, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, this hasn't been incredibly exciting, but I'm going to start... What I'm going to do is start the process of 3D printing this thing, which is going to be a major pain in my ass because my 3D printer is not fully level across its entire bed, and this is going to take up a significant portion of it. So I have to figure out where I can put this on the printer that it's going to be able to make something like this. And we're pushing the limit in terms of dimensions here. We are pushing the limit. I mean, this piece here is going to be so prone to flexing. That's going to be kind of a difficult thing about this, is that the flexure of that piece is not... It's not going to fully hold down the grating, but it'll look nice. <laughs> it'll look nice, and I hope it'll put enough pressure. I mean, if we've got an attachment point here and here, then that should be what puts the primary force down on the thing. I'm just concerned about, like, if I grab the computer by the side, and I roll this outwards, if it's going to unplug from over here. Bottom piece will be held in just fine because it's got that lip going on. And the alternative way that I could do this is having a piece bolt in below. No, that doesn't really work. That doesn't really work. Have one piece on one rail and the other one on the other, and then they bolt to one another. Maybe? This is getting complicated. I want simple. I want simple to work out for this. So, <laughs> so that's what we'll do. We'll do simple. But I think um, I think maybe putting a lip on this piece here might be a good idea because it visually will block the other end of the grating, and it won't. You won't see a gap. You'll see purple. You'll see purple. Did I miss? Did I miss the bits from noise source? I think we did that when it was the hype train. Did I thank everybody properly? I think I did. Baloo Ow for the 200 biddies and all the subs today. You guys are great. Um, that was fun. I hope you guys had fun with it. I hope you learned something because I don't think I did. Uh, <laughs> but this is a necessary step and hopefully we can drive this into the, the final look of the computer. This is like one of the big pieces that I've wanted to get done. The other ones that we got to do are the one that just holds a grating and then the, the one that holds the fans up. And the one that holds the fans up it's going to need a little space for that. Oh, boy. I almost knocked my drink over. That Okay, now i got adrenaline in my system. The piece over here that's going to hold up the, um, the fans, and this is thinner than the grid that I used on the, on the, the 3D printed ones. So, one, two, three blocks are pricey. I bought them from Amazon. I don't think I paid that much. They were, I mean, they were, what, one inch by two inch by three inch pieces of metal would cost. They're probably not high quality, though. Let's be honest. They're probably not up to any kind of a spec. <laughs> the specifications are bad, and I should feel bad. All right. This is where I end it. I'm going to do an end command. Let's see if it's been updated. And, uh, blop. 19 hours, 9 minutes, and 38 seconds, and I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Um, 
Do we got do we got anybody doing like uh cool stuff around Twitch or am I just gonna am I just gonna close it up? Oh my god, who is this guy that I'm watching right now? Uh ba 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 Yeah, I think I'm gonna keep it around here. I think I'm just gonna end it today. <laughs> Alright. See you guys later. I'll be back tomorrow. Be there.